Hello, 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 everybody, and a, a very warm welcome to Phil That Flies and to this second preview stream of the Just Flight BAE 146 100, which is still in beta at the moment. So, uh, just a heads up not everything is complete, not everything is working quite as it should just yet, but it is a fantastic little plane and I'm very much looking to fly, uh, forward to flying it again. Um, so today we're flying from Chicago O'Hare down to Aspen, Colorado, uh, which was a suggestion by a Club Filbert Gold member and all-round legend uh, Little Jenny. So it's her fault if everything goes horribly wrong. We're doing the Roaring Fork visual, or we're hoping to do the Roaring Fork visual, into uh, Aspen. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I've not done it before. Dazza, hello, how are you? It's been a while. Uh, welcome back, uh, and welcome to everyone who's here. Gibi, uh, Paul, Howling Crazy, uh, Simon, Jenny, uh, Captain Chris, uh, Echting, Echt Ingenieur, uh, Other Simon, and Alex, and I think that's everyone who's set up. Oh, and Marker. Marker first in the uh, in the restream chat. And Oski Boy 19 welcome to all of you. Um, <laughs> blame the American. Well, it is what it is, Jenny. I'm spitting facts. <laughs> Landed with plenty of fuel to spare. Feeder tank still above 50%. Now get to relax watching this. Oh, good. How was your landing? Um, Shin Kicker here has just flown the uh, Concord across from... Um, where did you go from? Barbados, wasn't it? Barbados to Heathrow. Uh, which reminds me, I am also going to be flying the Concorde. I'm going to be doing that on stream tomorrow uh, over, at, over on YouTube. So uh, do make sure you go and subscribe to me over there if you haven't already. So yes, we're parked up here at Gate Bravo 19. Uh, as far as, I mean, the thing is with historic flights, there's no hope of, um, of finding a real world gate. Uh, so I've just gone for wet. Oh my goodness, that's loud. <laughs> Marker! Thank you very, very much, boss. I hope the setup's quick and doesn't end up like a typical Ben's It won't be that slow, boss. Nobody's that slow. Uh, five months. Five months at uh, Tier 1. Thank you very much indeed. Going ahead to have the VRs turned off. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, a bit rough. According to Volanta, five, minus 500, but it felt smooth in the plane. So, uh, oh, absolutely. I've done two landings, and I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to give numbers... Uh, but I will say, uh, Paul, that both of them were quite a lot heavier than that. So, yeah, you're doing, you're doing fine, boss. You're doing fine. Um, yeah, a bit of chat in the Discord about which runway uh, to take off from. It does seem to be a bit of a free-for-all. The last several departures, they have taken off from um, two, a... Oh, no, I keep doing this. I click off the screen. This happens in all my planes. I click off the screen and it thinks I'm clicking something on the FB. <laughs> um, yeah, the last few of used to to left and to a right. They're both about the same distance away from here, i.e. quite a long way. So we're gonna we're probably gonna go for two to left if nothing changes. Needed to escape Tenerife, brought that bad weather from the UK with me. It was sunny skies when you arrived. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh it's looking beautiful though, your sim. Oh, it's MSFS. I always assume, I always assume your screenshots are from P3D. Um, but no, that's the, uh, yeah, it's the uh, MSFS skies, isn't it? Nice route, lovely route. A fantastic aircraft, many steam gauges, conventional navigation, and a challenging visual approach. What could be better than that? Exactly, Simon. What more could anyone ask for? <laughs> Scott, good afternoon, boss. Welcome. How are you? No such clouds in P3D. No, I know. I was like, God, what's he done? <laughs> Volumetric clouds have improved since I last looked. Anyway, because Jenny has to go to work soon, um, and Simon, or who was it? No, it was Marcus, very worried about the stream setup time as well. We'll crack on, we'll crack on. Uh, so we've got a few simple checks to do before we uh, power up the aircraft. We need to make sure that the weather radar's off, it's not uh, fitted yet. Uh, transponder should be in standby down here, uh, which it is. Uh, air brake should be in which it is, uh, battery one and two can come on. So up on the overhead, battery one on, battery two on, or just turn battery one off again, either or, both are good. Uh, landing gear should be down three green, and it is, but my lever on my quadrant is not because I had to abandon my piper midair, uh, so I'll just sort that out. Um, good, I'm pleased boss, I'm pleased. I bought the Cessna 414 AW yesterday and it's a lovely jib. I've heard really good things. I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased you're pleased with it. Mm. 
The sounds are fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Uh, brake selector should be yellow system and pulled. And it is. Uh, the Yaw Damper, Autopilot and Avionics Master Switches should come on. And they are over here. See, I'm getting better at remembering where things are. I don't know everything yet, but uh, I'm getting there. Um, the Anti-Skid and Life Spoilers, as I have put on my checklist, but in fact Lift Spoilers, uh, should be on. Uh, yeah, so that's all three of them done. Bus tie switches can come on. Mm, bus tie switches, bus tie switches. Where would they be? Ah, who's this? First follower of the stream, Clown. Clown ZLG, thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the channel. Turning on the battery and it sounded like a slot machine. <laughs> it did a bit. Flysim, where are the company that made the L Learjet 35 for P3D? Oh, really? Yeah, I, I haven't got it myself because I've just my GA hanger's a little bit full at the moment, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it so far. So yeah, yeah, go for it. I think uh, Tim, the corporate pilot dad, has made a video on it. If you want to check it out before committing, he knows his stuff. Um, standby inverter and standby gen should be armed. So they are here. Uh, generator 1 and 4 should be on, ready for when we start the engines. No, they shouldn't. They should be off reset, not ready for when we start the engines. <laughs> what I'm thinking of is the APU gen, which can come on prior to starting the APU. Um, and we can turn on the left inner fuel pump and get the APU started up, which we do up here. So yeah, six. Gibi! My God, that was out the blue. A £15.20 donation. <laughs> £15.20 donation. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much indeed, boss. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, mate. Hope you're well. Have I flown the Concorde? Yes, we were just talking about that before you arrived, actually. I've done two flights on it, and um, I really like it. I really like it. And, in fact, I'm streaming it tomorrow evening. What I'll do... Uh, is I'll post a little link to the stream. Then, uh, then you'll you'll have it, and you'll be able to come and s come and see it live. Uh, so that's happening over on YouTube, and at uh, eighteen no seventeen thirty Zulu eighteen thirty UK time. It's a lot fuller featured than I thought it was. It's hard work at times uh, to get it to do what you want it to do in terms of fuel balancing and that sort of thing. But I really rate it. I really do. I didn't think it would be for me, and it's yeah, for twenty eight pounds. It buys you an awful lot of fun. That's what I'd say about the Concorde. Anyone else had an issue where you have to reinstall MSFS after it checks for up? Yes! Oh, no, I haven't had to reinstall it, no. But it basically checked for updates, and then it downloaded the two Asobo airports that I deleted, Heathrow and Denver, and then all of my settings were back to zero. Like It was like a brand new install of the sim, so I don't know what the hell that was. And now performance isn't, isn't particularly good. Already looking forward to the stall warning sound. That sounds like someone drilling into the cabin wall or the minigun. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. And we have another follower, Onyx940. Thank you very much. Welcome to the channel. Heard mixed reviews about the Concorde. We'll keep my pennies for this beast instead. Fair enough. I mean, if you're looking for a high-fidelity, top-quality add-on, then yeah, this is this is the one, not the Concorde. But yeah, for the price, the Concorde's amazing. You've watched some of my YouTube videos, thought you recognised many. Ah, right, yes, yeah. So I used to stream just on YouTube um, as well as doing videos here, but I've, I'm doing a bit of both now. I'm focusing on Twitch a little bit more um, because my YouTube streams are just not as popular as they were and Twitch is growing, so yeah. So I'm over here slightly more than I'm on YouTube at the moment, but I still stream on both. Uh, right, APU started. APU air switch can come on. Uh, MWS we can test. I'm going to say, with confidence, that's the master warning system. I can't remember for sure if that's right, but it sounds right, doesn't it? So there we are. And uh, there are a variety of ground tests that we can perform now up on the overhead. I'm not going to do them all, but because someone mentioned the stall warning, we'll do that now. It does sound very, very much like a pneumatic drill. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alex, what is this command? Uh, also bought the TDS GTNXI this morning to complement your selection of GA planes. Ooh, good. I don't know if I've even heard of that. 
I've got the GTN 750, but I didn't know about the NXI. I shall have to look it up. Pete! Sam Pete, welcome. Aloha. <laughs> what plane is this, mate? Is it a new payware? Yeah, it's a, it's an as yet unreleased payware. So it's the Just Flight BAE 146. And this is the 100 variant. And it's a beta build that they've very kindly given me um, to stream and make some content with. So it's not out yet, uh, but it will be coming out. Hopefully, I don't have a date, but hopefully uh, towards the end of this month. That is the impression I get. There's still quite a lot to go, so it doesn't have a working FMS yet. That's the next big thing that I'm hoping to have my hands on in a week or so. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It's yeah, it's the best. It's the best airline I've flown in the sim. Put it that way. Okay, so we're now going to test our uh, hydraulic. We're going to test the AC pump, and we're looking for a rise in the PSI over here. And that's going up, so we can turn that back off. We're going to turn the PTU on and off. Um, my understanding is that the PTU should also give a rise somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, it doesn't seem to do anything at the moment. But anyway, whatevs. Um, it just parrots the message about finding me on Twitch. Nothing. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> uh, looks. Quite, it is very impressive. It is. Corporate pilot, Dad. Funny running into you over here on Twitch. It is. Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. And thank you for the shout out and your uh, video as well. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, welcome. You can watch me fail to fly the 146. <laughs> no, this is my second stream of it. I'm feeling, I was feeling confident last stream. Um, however, we're flying into Aspen and we're doing the Roaring Fort visual and I just, things could go wrong. Things could go very, very wrong. But that's okay. That's the beauty of a sim. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we need to arm the flight deck emergency lighting. It's another switch that I can never find. Oh, I think I can. I think it's down here, isn't it? Yes. So we'll arm that. Uh, we could test the oxygen if we wanted, but we're gonna we're gonna tear through this. We're gonna tear through this um, because Jenny has to go to work. The doors are already open. Um, we are not using the air stairs today. This is the first time I've connected a jetway to the aircraft, and as you may have noticed already, I don't know, it's connected very nicely. Very nicely indeed. So yeah, it's quite cool. And the door's open and uh, inside it. So, where are we up to? Uh, we're up to our before start flow, really. Uh, so the parking brake, we'll check, is on. So these, this, uh, this nav database can't be uh, can't be updated via Navigraph, or can it? Parking brake is on. And do we have sufficient accumulator pressure? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> ah, here we are. Here we are. We've got, yes, we've got pressure in the yellow system. That sounds, that looks good to me. I don't know why I started going down this path. I have no idea about accumulator pressure. Uh, thrust levers should be set to fuel off. And all four of them are. Um, the hydraulics are all off, we know that. Uh, we'll turn on the centre tank transfer switch, uh, which is up here somewhere. Where's the fuel guff? There it is. So that needs to go to auto. Pressurisation mode selector, that's up, uh, up here. That should be set to auto. And it is. And we're going to set our cruising altitude, which today is going to be flight level 280 is three, two, three, hang on, what am I looking at there? Two, five, six, seven, eight. There we are, 280, which is gonna give us a cabin altitude of about 7,400 feet, something like that. There's a lot to get this thing going, there is. And I have, I've just realized I haven't even loaded any uh, any passengers or fuel yet, I should do that. Um, so I want to take, ah oh yes, some of you are not aware of this. We had a little bit of trouble with the flight planning in that all of the profiles that I have that are meant to be for the BAE 146, are telling me that the flight time exceeds the range of the aircraft, which it absolutely doesn't because we're flying about 900 miles and this plane can go 1500 miles quite easily. There's no massive headwind, so it's a little bit of a mystery. So what we're going to do is uh, just put in as much fuel as we possibly can and hope for the best. Uh, and as much fuel as we possibly can is I don't know actually on this. Nine four one eight, fine, okay. 
Uh, and to have that maximum fuel quantity, we're going to have to remove some of the passengers or some of the cargo. So our zero fuel weight uh, should be uh, 32455 five, according to the flight plan. But obviously that's causing going to cause us problems because we're already over our uh, maximum takeoff weight and we're not even that heavy. So we're just going to start reducing this. We're going to do it by trial and error. I'm hopeful that we will have a proper sim brief profile for it by the time it releases. Uh, but for now, we'll just bodge it. There we are. We can take 28,000 uh, kilograms. So that's 46 passengers, 156 kilograms. 100? No, it must be tons. Tons of uh, cargo in the forward and the aft holds. And uh, we've actually got our uh, doors open. I don't know how I've managed to do that. Uh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> we can close them anyway. And we'll pr plow on with our before start flow. Discharge valves, we should check, are set to normal. Back on the pressurization section up here. Yep, they are. Uh, the altitude set we've done. Ice detection switch can come on down here. Uh, the fuel gauges, we're going to check we have sufficient fuel. Well, we've just put in as much fuel as we can possibly hold. Although this center tank is not full. So maybe we could add a little more even. Should we add a little more? don't know why I couldn't do that down here. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So it's on 9418 at the moment. Well, let's just experiment a little. Can we put 9500 in there? No. See, it doesn't want to go above 9418. So maybe, I mean, I'm no expert in any of this, uh, but there could be a reason, I guess, why we can't fill up the fuel tanks completely. Maybe that's as much as it can hold, um, but they're just using the same gauge, whereas in real life, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps this can only hold 20 tons. That is possible. Um, so fine. We've got as much fuel as we can take. Pilot Adam, hello. <laughs> Welcome. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, we're going to set local pressure before we forget. So that's uh, 2 niner point seven niner. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but you can't bring any luggage with you. We need the space for fuel. <laughs> Except I'm sure we don't. I'm sure we could fill it up and still have uh, still have plenty of um, weight available for fuel. But anyway, we are where we are. Okay, so the fuel gauges, we're going to say they're showing sufficient fuel. Uh, we could tot it up, actually, couldn't we? So we've got about 38 tonnes in each of the outer tanks. So that's 76 86, 96, about 96 tons, which is about what we have in here. Yeah, fine. Uh, if we want to, we can set our flight number in the, or check the date and then set our flight number in the uh, flight data recorder panel over here. What's all that racket? Someone's starting up next to me, I think. Um, yeah, so, 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 what was I saying? Yes. We can see here that we have today's date. It puts that in automatically. And then if we want to, we can set a flight number in here with these uh, uh, things. So let's do it. We are today United 4585. So let's put that in. And it is really hard to see. I think, however, you can, if, you, if I can find the click spot, remove this side panel to make it a little easier. There we are. Better. Four, five, what did I say? Eight, five, yeah. There we are. So today's date, the 4th of April, flight 4585. Bailey, hello, how are you? And Captain Chris, you're incoming to Heathrow. Nice, have a good landing, boss. Have a good landing. And Ribbon, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, good, so we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting there. So this is because we don't have an FMS yet, we're flying VOR to VOR today. And so what we're going to do is preset a few frequencies. Our first VOR that we're going to fly to is uh, Dupage. And the frequency for that is 108.4. So we'll get our uh, Nav1 radio turned on and switch it to the on position. Wait for it to do its little pre-test thing. 108.4 and we want to fly an inbound course ah hang on I haven't got me map up stand by one mm. 
You're having you're having a an electrical failure. Your ILS and barometric systems aren't working. Oh no! What plane are you in, boss? <laughs> How's it really pronounced, him? Du Page. It's the do. Makes me think it's French, but probably not. K O R D K A S E. There we are. Awesome. Uh, so our inbound course to the first VOR is going to be 253. Here we are. 253. We'll put our cruising fl uh, altitude in, which is going to be flight level 280. And I believe we can click it to turn it to thousands, can't we? Or is, am I? See, I'm getting mixed up between this and the Concorde. I don't know. I thought there was a way. No, there's no click spot on that. So we'll just hold shift. Due page, like page in a book. Right, okay. Thank you. Must have a French origin, though, no? Next test for you. <laughs> yeah, I've never been sure. I, I, I know it's Moyne. But is it Des Moines? Or is it... It's got to be Des Moines. It can't be Des Moines, can it? Surely. Yeah, I think it's Des Moines or Des Moines. Maybe it's just Des Moines. Sure, it's originally French, but it's been Americanized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you lot like doing that, don't you? <laughs> this is new. I've never had an electrical failure before. No, which uh, which plane are you in? And on this episode of Phil Speaks American. <laughs> Also say Kankanki? Or is it Kankanki? Surely there's no other way of pronouncing that other than changing the emphasis a little bit. Lightly just above with the CS. CS? As in the captain said. Oh, okay, yeah, could 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 be. Yeah. Kankuki. Kankaki. Well that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not here. I'm not here to. Uh, I'm not here to, to, to tell Americans how to speak. That's not my role at all. But that. That is crazy. <laughs> Kankaki. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'm totally distracted now. What was I doing? I've done that. I've done that. Oh, we should set a runway heading, which means we need to pick a runway. So let's go for two two left, shall we? I'm sick of thinking about this. They need to pick a runway and stick with it. And if they're not prepared to do that, <laughs> I'm going to take whatever one I want. Uh, yeah, 225. And that should help us intercept our radial, which will be cool. So we change the heading up here. And ever since my sim re uh, re reset itself, I've had these cockpit toolkit tool tips, which are sometimes actually quite helpful. So there we are, 225 there. Uh, we need to arm the altitude, otherwise we'll blow right through it. Oh, it doesn't want to do it. Maybe you can't do that unless autopilot's engaged. We can turn on our flight director bars and rather than just clicking things like I have been, I'm going to go back to my carefully uh, carefully curated um, flows sheet. So we've done the flight data recorder, transponder panel. Ah, yes, we can put in the uh, flight ID down here as well. Did you know that? I don't think I showed you that last time. It's quite cool. It's like using an old Nokia. So we're going to go to FID and we're going to press 8. No, we're not because that's got the wrong letters on it. <laughs> we're going to press 7 to get the U. Oh, it's not quite like an old Nokia, is it? No, it's not, because they, they've shifted forward one. It's not the same. No wonder I can't do it. Right. <laughs> U, A. I don't know if they want the IATA or the ICAO code, but uh, to avoid pressing so many buttons, we're going to go for that one. 4585. Five. There we go, and enter. We don't need to press enter. Yes, we do. So that's it. That's our flight ID put in. Yeah, Captain Chris, I hope it goes all right. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry you're having issues with it. 
Uh, we can now switch back to the ATC mode and we can clear that and put in, well, there's no ATC online here at O'Hare, so we'll just give it a code of 2000. Start the plane. It won't be long, Jenny. It won't be long. Just be a bit late for work. You're airborne and off to Aspen. Skiing awaits. Enjoy. Enjoy, Sam. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. <laughs> okay. Cool. We're getting there. We're getting there, I promise. So next we're going to sort out our takeoff figures um, on the TMS. So we're going to power her up. We're going to run the self-test, which has to be done before you can do anything else. Uh, I'm going to get the latest meta from uh, O'Hare because we need to put in the outside air temperature, which it normally gets right, but pays to check. So that's saying plus eight, I think. Yes, plus eight. That's good. That's what it should be. Uh, next we are going... Oh, Tim, you might know this if you're still here. How do you determine your TGT temperature that goes in there? The manual... The manual suggests a figure of 840, which is what I use, but there must be more to it than just putting in 840, right? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do for now. Um, yeah, so that should be the max climb temp. Next, we are going to set our N1 and TGT bugs. Now, I know from experience that if I click on this, it's going to set my bugs for the speeds for the V1, etc. I've got a feeling it might also set my bugs on here, so let's just try it. No, it doesn't. It does just do your speeds. Okay, I was wrong. I thought I'd seen them spin around. Anyway, so we'll have to set those manually. Um, so we're going to press the takeoff button, and that's giving us our uh, N1% for takeoff, so 94.2. So we'll spin these all around. I think the sim is calling me out for being fat. It's rooting me for Oreos. <laughs> 15 minutes before the VORs are shut. Christ. What, all of them? Could you not have asked them to turn them off one by one, Jenny? <laughs> Luckily, it's pretty clear under 2000, so you can do a manual. Oh, good. Where are you flying in from? I know you said you're arriving in Heathrow, but uh, yeah, what's your route? Oh, thank you. Maybe that temp is max temp for takeoff. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's exactly what it is. But I don't know how you decide what that figure should be. Anyway, 840 has always worked for me. So I'll be fine today as well, I'm sure. They're either all on or all off. There's just one master switch. <laughs> one big red button in the FAA off. <laughs> right, so 94. And we'll set 840 on here. Oh, blimey, that's a good long flight. That is a very good long flight. And a lovely route. San Diego is an awesome airport. Uh, what did we say? 840. Yes, 840. As you can see, it does take a little while, but it's all part of the immersion. I voted for not a chance, but that's assuming I'm a passenger in the BAE. Not a chance of what, boss? I'm drinking apple and pear juice with a little bit of water. Half apple and pear juice, half water. It's a, it's a funny colour, I know. It's a bit, bit grey-looking. It's very tasty. And uh, hopefully it'll keep me awake and alert. At least until at least until we get into the sky, if not all the way to Aspen. Oh, Alex is flexing his pole creation. Oh, yes. Will there be any snow in Corinth, Colorado when we arrive? <laughs> That's brilliant. Sounds like cider to me. Yeah. Will that drink cure hangovers? It'll help, I think. If only because of the sugar. But I'm not hungover today. 
I won't lie to you, yesterday I felt worse than I have in many years because of the booze. Today, I feel a lot, lot better. Perhaps a little sleepy, but generally, generally okay. <laughs> You're up and away as well. Good, 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 good. Anyone waiting for me or no? So that fruit juice, that fruit combination makes it stair juice. Why stir? Apple and pear, boss. Were you that American uh, Oski boy who was parked next to me? Once we're in the air, we'll have a look at who's who and who's where. Best followers, primes and viewers on... Oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Someone deal with this, would you? Oh, yeah. Oh, Cockney rhyming something. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. So that's that set. Okay, flight director pods we've already put on. Our ASI reference speed bugs we set. So you'll notice that this has automatically flipped to the page that is closest to our current weight, so 37,000 kilograms. And that's given us a V rotate speed of 120, V2 of 131. And it's uh, put these bugs here for us when I clicked on it, which is really cool. But you can, of course, move these manually as well. Do yeah, I didn't realize I'd be this long. It's only been half an hour. I said it'd probably take me about half an hour to set up. We're nearly there. But yeah, it does take a little while, it's true. Uh, heading button, we want to press that to arm. Uh, we've already set the heading in the CDI. It's not called a CDI on this, but I can't remember what it is called. So we will arm heading mode here. Um, we've set our altitude. We don't need to tune our ADF because we're not following any NDBs at the moment. RMIDBI, that's what it's called. Uh, we'll set that to VOR or ADF as needed. So what we could do, in fact, is tune in uh, NAV2. We could tune our second VOR that we're going to be following. That sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Which is going to be Newton. I can pronounce that one. Confident. Confident with my pronunciation, that one. That's going to be 112.5. So again, we'll turn this... Oh, I've already turned it on, I think. 112.5. So what that will do is it will give us uh, a DME reading here for um, NAV2. And it will give us a pointer when we're within range as well. Uh, so we'll have pointers to both our VORs. Um, isn't there a way to just set the TGT with like one click? I'm sure I remember seeing that in the X-Plane version or something. I haven't found one, but there might be. There might be. <laughs> Scott, it's only been 35 minutes and we're almost ready to push back. Ben wouldn't have even flicked a switch yet, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, right, so we now want to be getting rid of the air stairs, which we're not using. Um, so what we need to do is close the doors. We may as well remove the chocks and we may as well remove the jetway as well. And we'll get ready for pushback. See, 30, 34 minutes and we're good to go, honestly. Leica flights illustream. I never heard of the like of it. Stormboat flies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Why aren't I getting 10 million alerts that distract me, boss? <laughs> Just told Casablanca Raid I have a good afternoon. Felt very nigely again. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciated it, boss. <laughs> uh, right, there we are. Uh, let me just check that the fastened seatbelt signs are on. I don't think, don't remember setting them. There we are. On. We can turn the beacon on, which is up in the top. The way the lights are set out on here is really weird to me. I don't know if it is to anyone else who's flown this, but... Yeah, you've got a big block of lights here and another set of lights down here, and it's hard to remember what is where. Um, so, yeah, beacon on. At no point in the manual does it tell you to arm the cabin emergency lighting, but I think I should. That seems like a good idea. Uh, so that's that. Um, we'll turn on all the fuel pumps. We'll check that the pack switches are off. So we've got the left inner on for the APU. Um, we'll turn all the others on. Pack switches are off up here. Uh, we need to check that the start power switch is set to normal. And it is. 
uh, the start master switch can come on. Now I've got a feeling that you're supposed to turn the APU air off, but I don't have that in my little flows sheet that I put together. Let me just consult the manual very quickly, because the last thing I want is to teach you wrong. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Da -da 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 -da. Come on, come on, come on. Where are we? Starting the engines. Yes, APU air switch should be off. And the packs should both be off, which they are. Okay, let's get pushed back. Uh, this one. Push back. Pre plan push back. Okay. Just takes a minute. Right. We want to face right, don't we? Ooh, I can't remember where we are. Hold on. <laughs> Pro streamer here. Oh yeah, we definitely want to face right. And if you want, you can add multiple waypoints. Who was it who was saying earlier that they normally did that? Was it you, Marker? Let's try adding multiple waypoints. We'll go for a bit of a journey. <laughs> it's all right, I think. Okay, let's enter. And we'll say something on Unicom. We should tune Unicom, actually. This is the first time I've flown on VATSIM in this plane. I was bullied into it um, by Wojtek. So we're doing it. And we're just hoping that no ATC comes online, basically. <laughs> the Flying Pearl, welcome. Thank you very much for the follow. Oh. Okay, I thought one was a standby, but no, they are not. What does that say? Does it not say transfer? Yeah, it does. Okay. Is that working? Yeah, so you just tune that one, that's fine. 122.8. There we go. And now, I'm always a bit unsure about whether to... Bloody hell, Matt! Matt and viewers, welcome! Welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you very much indeed for the raid. That is a big old raid. And you join us at a great time as well. Because we're just about to get pushed back in the very uh, exciting Just Flight BAE 146. Hello, I love bread. Hello, Lucas GB 77. Um, I said it earlier about using multiple points. Yes, you did. Just to make sure it ends up straight and not at a slight angle. I knew someone did. Welcome to all of you. Uh, thank you very much for coming. How was your stream? Oh, wait, I've got a new command, like a pro streamer that does this. FS Bart, thank you for the follow. Vinny Flying, uh, thank you for the follow. Matt, thank you for the follow. Uh, Chris and Dylan, uh, thank you all very, very much. Now, I think... Hang on. Let me see. I'm, I'm still not sure what I'm doing. MT320 underscore. Is that going to work? Yes! Yes, there you are. Make sure you go and follow uh, Matt. He's a uh, real-world A320 first officer who also streams. And, uh, yeah, well worth a watch. Well worth a watch. Captain Gert, welcome. Um, and, my goodness, I cannot keep up with these follows. Tim, thank you for the follow. Chris, Lockie, uh, Captain Gert, Lucas, GB, Vinny. I think, I think I've caught up, I think. Um, yeah, awesome. Lovely to have you here. Lovely to have you here. Uh... So, oh gosh, I don't know what we were doing then. Oh yeah, we were about to push back, weren't we? And I was just looking to see, yeah, and I was just about to say, I don't know if we have to announce it on Unicom because the US is a bit weird. Sometimes you talk to people about pushing back, sometimes you don't. It can't hurt, can it? It can't hurt. Uh, so we'll tell them. Lucas, thank you very much indeed for the sub thank you very much indeed uh, welcome to club Philbert. uh much appreciated do make sure you're on the uh on the old discord uh, stream elements has just posted a link we have exclusive subscribers only channels on there um and simon thank you for the gifted sub 99 gift subs that's incredible thank you and matt welcome to club Philbert as well <laughs> Absolute legends. Thank you very much and welcome once again. Okay, so request pushback. Cockpit to ground. 
Oh, we've got the audio one again. Stand by. Didn't want that. Never mind. Where? Oh shit! No. Sorry. Excuse my language. It's gonna lift the nose. It's gonna. And and another gifted sub from Lucas, who's only just subscribed himself to Mr. Dylan. Thank you. Thank you very very much indeed. Here are my ten million alerts. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice of you all. Thank you. Anyway, the reason I turned, before my sim reset itself, the reason I turned off audio and simulated nose wheel lift is because sometimes it... Okay, sir, the bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is And there's your hundred, Simon. Set. You may lift. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Geepy, welcome to Club Philbert Ruby. Uh, yes, as I said, last time this happened, it ended up on its tail, but that's fine. We we'll just deal with it. Start and push. <laughs> okay, clear it for push start. Please this is chaos. This is chaos. <laughs> oh dear. Right, Bravo one nine. Oh, O'Hare traffic. Uh, United forty five eighty five pushing back from stand Bravo one nine. No, sorry, Bravo nineteen. I should have said. Commencing pushback, you can start the engine. Is it still lifting or is it stopped? Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. No, no. Oh. Oh. No, it seems to be all right. Is it, Voita, is it doing what it does to you? The pushback test going a weird way. Not actually turning. Oh, well, we'll see what happens here. And meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, we'll get this, the engine started. So... Fuel pumps are on. Uh, what happens next? Start power switch. Should be a normal it is. Start master is on. And we rotate this to engine four. And we go for start. And we'll monitor that as it starts up. Trying to ignore the terrifying noises coming from the pushback tug. <laughs> um, it is contagious. Lucas! Lucas, you've just... Have you just upgraded from Tier 1 to Tier 2? Bloody hell, but thank you very, very much. And that makes you now a member of Club Philbert Sapphire, um, which is awesome. You can come and join us on our monthly group flights if you want. Um, but that's incredible. Thank you so much. And Scott gifting a sub. Who got, who got the, Scott, the sub from Scott? Bless you, boss. That's really nice of you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, anyway, well, what are we doing? Well, we're trying to make the plane go, aren't we? So we're looking for about 15% of N2, which we're way over now. And then we can introduce some fuel into engine four. And I'll pop outside and let you hear the poggers start up. <laughs> well, Luca, that's amazing. Thank you. Oh, you gave it to Tree to Man. Nice. Where is he? Is he here? I do, I'm not used to this level of... I'm not used to this level of excitement. <laughs> I'm not. And suddenly, you know, you go from... You go from, like, 20-odd people watching to 100-odd people watching, and that's never happened to me on Twitch before. So, yeah, I feel a little... Uh, feel a little hot. <laughs> anyway, it's lovely. It's lovely to have you all here. Parking brake set. Lowering aircraft. Right, so engine four is pretty much stable. So all we do is go up to the top and uh, start the engines in order. Okay, Three sir. next. Engine start. Look for fifteen percent of N two on N two. Fifteen percent N two. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> mm. Right, there we are. There's fifteen percent, give or take. Give it some fuel. Five hundred. Jamesy! With 569 bits! Looking hot as well. <laughs> That's not going to help batters. <laughs> Thank you very, very much indeed, boss. What's the significance of 569, though? Oh, Matt, it's brilliant. It looks brilliant, it sounds brilliant, it flies. Well, I don't know, I've never flown anything like this, but to me, it feels like they've done a really good job on the flight model. You're going to enjoy it. Best airliner in MSFS so far, by a country mile, I think. Well, best jet airliner. I haven't flown the DC-6, so I can't really compare it to that. But yeah, it's brilliant. I'm really enjoying it. Um, engine 2. Start. 
Ooh, we should set the parking brake, shouldn't we? It's a good idea. Um, yes, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know when it's... Yeah, just just speak to Just Flat. I'm sure they'd sort you out. But I think it's being released in a few weeks' time. I get the impression that they're looking at mid to late April uh, for everyone else. Yeah, Alex, you picked a bad time to step away, boss. Absolute madness. We've had a raid from uh, Mr. Matt 320. And yeah, people keep subscribing and gifting and stuff like that. It's all a bit much, quite frankly. <laughs> it's the best airline. It is the best airline in MSFS. I said that when I first flew it on MSFS. There have been so many improvements since then. Yeah, there we are. There we are. Oski boy gifting out subs as well. Thank you, boss, very much indeed. Now, why can't I see who these are going to? What am I doing wrong? Why do everyone else can see it, but I can't? Oh, there we are, now I can. Magic Turtle AU, nice. Thank you, boss. You've got 30K Philbia's book presentation in a future stream, yes. Lucas! Lucas! Boss, that's and that's so. You, right, let me just get my head around this. You have subscribed at tier one. You've gifted us up. You've then changed your mind and upgraded to tier two, and now you're giving out five gift subs and completing a level three hype train. This is utter madness, utter madness, but very much appreciated madness nonetheless. <laughs> um, Jenny, you've got thirty thousand field beers. Book presentation in a future street. Jesus Christ. Simon! Simon! 105 gifted subs to the channel. Thank you, boss, very, very much. That's unbelievable. What's this? Level 4? Level 4 completed! Jesus. Thank you. You know I know you're a legend. But, uh, you don't need to do this to prove it to me. But thank you. <laughs> Uh, we're not getting, we are getting off the ground. We've got three out of four engines started. What more do you want? Yeah, I know. I read that. There's no missed approach. We cannot go around at uh, Aspen. I know. I don't know what the weather's looking like. Worst case scenario, though. Who's this? SI120. Thank you. Or SI120. Welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you very much for the follow. Well, boss. <laughs> You got what you wished for anything. I know, I feel very churlish for what I said earlier. Now. Thank you, Mark, for the hundred bits. <laughs> yeah, you know, if we have to divert to Denver, we divert to Denver, it's no biggie. It's a fact, it'll be a lot less stressful for me. We'll go down to minimums. If we can't land, we'll go Denver. Right, anyway, yes, 15%. Start engine one. We're getting there. Going to be getting a bit hot in the cabin because we've got no um, bleed air going in at the moment, but uh, that's not my problem. Chandler from Fen's voice. <laughs> off, take off, take off. Soon, boss. Soon. Jenny's about to flip the table. Probably need to call my boss. Oh, Jenny, I'm so sorry. Lucas! Lucas! It's too much, boss. <clears throat> Can't talk properly anymore. Your generosity is insane. 10 gifted subs, a tier 2 subscription. You're s no, that's 15, isn't it? No, it's 10. It's 10, I think. I don't know, I've lost track. I've only got it in a little window and I can't see what's going on. But thank you once again, boss. Thank you. There's the hype train complete. 146% level 5. This is, this is not what happens at Filbert Flies. This is very exciting. 10 plus 1, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for that. Much appreciated. Right, and it comes at a good time because we can actually do some stuff now. Um, we have started all of the engines, which means we can turn the engine start selector to normal. Or not, and we can turn that off. Sorry, start master off, start selector to off. That's what I meant to say. Um, I think. Let me double check that. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Gen 1 and Gen 4 can come online now on the electrical panel. Gen 1 and Gen 4. I can't get over what just happened there. It's 
mental. Uh, APUA can come back on, get some, gets all cooled down a little bit. Pack switches can come on, one and two. Uh, and the brake fans should be in auto if they're not already. Now I think, are they up here? Brake fans, brake fans, they're, no, they're going to be up the other side, I think, aren't they? In the misc. Yeah, brake fans to auto. Engine two and three hydraulic pumps can come on. Two and three. So yeah, this aircraft has generators on engines one and four, hydraulic pumps on engines two and three, as far as I can tell. Uh, ice protection panel heaters. Now, I quite like this because you just stick them on, um, which means you don't have to worry about icing. Uh, just, just happens, as far as I can tell. Can't find the right bit of the... Oh my goodness me, Lucas. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're, you are an absolute legend. Next fiver for MT320. Uh, thank you, and and Mephi, Mephistonag, or Mephistonag, I bet there's a better way of pronouncing that. Welcome, thank you. Oh, and now Will's at it! <laughs> Who's Phil put the president? <laughs> Just when you think it's over. Thank you, boss. Thank you very much indeed. I, oh, Ben, I literally pop it for one minute, even though I can't hear anything, and this is what I see. Jenny and Simon blasphemy. <laughs> I, I know. See, I'm still doing better than Ben. That's the Oh, you know, that's the main thing, isn't it? In terms of getting underway. It was. It was him. It was him. <laughs> no, you stay, boss. You stay. Don't you worry about your work. We know, we know that you don't have that much to do. You don't have to pretend to be busy on our account. Technically, you've got nine minutes till it becomes a Zillistrian Christ. Okay, let's press on a little bit then. Um, APU's on. Engines, right, hydraulic pump, ice protection. That's what we were looking for, isn't it? Ice protection. So all the heaters, all the heaters, just stick them on. Jobs are good in. Um, transponder can go to TA. At no point does it tell you to turn it to TARA, but, uh, you know... Whatever. So maybe it doesn't have TARA actually, that would explain it. Uh, no, it does. Oh, hello. Hello, armrest. That's exactly what I needed. Uh, and we can we can set our flaps and we can taxi. We can set our flaps and taxi, Jenny. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Honestly, I don't even take that long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, Sam, you said it would five minutes and it would be a Zilla stream. But I've already pushed back and got my engine started. If it was a Zilla stream, five minutes he'd be thinking about pushing back. And even that would be a quick one, let's be honest. Uh, good, flaps are out. We can turn our taxi lights on now, which are basically just the reverse of the landing light switch, which I quite like. Um, I don't remember turning my beacon light on, but I did. Okay, so we're going 2-2 left, aren't we? I can't even face checking that's still the wrong way in use. I'm just going to go for it. Lucas! Lucas! You're going to bankrupt yourself. Goodness me. 21 subs and you've only just, only just arrived yourself. Thank you very, very much indeed. Much appreciated. I don't know what else to say. Thank you somehow doesn't feel like enough. Um... But yes, it's really, you're an absolute legend and very much appreciated. Okay, what taxiways are we going to be taking? Bravo. Oh, it's one of these airports that doesn't have decent taxiway charts. Going to taxi via Bravo. Just going to go Bravo all the way? We'll tell them we are. Uh, Bravo then... Victor? Yeah, Bravo Victor. O'Hare traffic, United 4585, taxiing to holding point runway 22 left via Bravo and Victor. Let's go. Oh, let's get track IR going. So that I can see stuff. Uh, Hydra Denoma, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Oh, hello. There we are. Right, parking brake can come off. 
a little bit of thrust to get going. At least with your streams, I've never actually arrived at a destination before he's departed. <laughs> That's true. Spilner 999, hello, how are you? Can't bankrupt yourself if the money's stolen from Zilla. And no, it wasn't me that gave him Zilla's bank details, I promise. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's been ste- how's he stolen Zilla's money? <laughs> It is posh. It is. So this is not just track up. This is a Delan clip, which is a wireless thing. You wouldn't know it because there's a wire plugged into it. But, yeah, I've got enough juice. And it makes you look ridiculous, but it's worth it to be able to see where you're going. And really, I only use it on the taxi. The rest of the time, I don't bother. You should get it, though. I would recommend it. What's rare, Will? Oh god, I've missed a lot of chat, haven't I? I can't hear Philbert, but I just know he's waffling. Bruh. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go down there. Why can't he hear me? Oh, no. Martin, hello boss, welcome, welcome. Don't look at chat and taxi, it doesn't go bad, it doesn't go well. Track IR, I can't find any for sale, really? I got mine through Amazon. Track IR5 with a with a Delan clip. Wireless. I think it's got a proper name, but I can't remember what it is. It not only makes you look ridiculous, but also like you've got a neck problem. <laughs> we are at court today. Yes, we are, boss. Yeah. Yeah, we're going from here to uh, Aspen, Colorado. And we're going to try for the Roaring Fork visual. Uh, which I've never done before, so why not do it on a plane that I don't really know how to fly very well? That's my thinking. You'll have to link it. Let me have a quick look, boss. Uh, stand by one. Track IR5. Yeah, there's loads of them for sale, boss. Um... I don't know if this, yeah, I don't know what this comes with, but it seems quite a lot of money to be honest with you. No, 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 no. You don't get to tell me to link you a track IR on Amazon and then complain about me not following the center line. Oh, it is. How did you know? Yeah. Anyway, it's closed now. I did that earlier as well. When I click off, off the screen, for some reason, this happens in all planes, uh, i.e. when I click on my second monitor, which is just to the left, it uh, it often operates things on the FBs or opens windows and things. You can turn off the tablet, yes, you can turn it off here. In fact, that's a very good idea. It's a bit fiddly. Let me just stop the plane a second. It's not like there's anyone here that we're going to be getting in the way of. So you can rotate it, which is cool. There we are. So the EFB on off is just inside there, and you can actually hide it uh, if you look at if you look at this. There we are. Click that. Um, I don't even know what it is. Anyway, that little placard down there. So yeah, we'll get rid of it. Problem solved. The Roaring Fork visual is a very scenic visual approach in real life. Yes, I can imagine it is. I remember you showed me a video of you doing it for real. Actually, I think it was certainly one of the approaches. Um, but yeah, it's scary. <laughs> what did Dylan say? Sorry. Yeah, about the Afkaga door. Yeah, don't, yeah. Glad you spotted that. <laughs> Stewie, good afternoon, boss. How are you? So we're coming out onto Bravo now. We're going to make a left turn. So is there anyone left at the airport? Or has everyone just raced off without me? I'm sick of waiting. Gosh, yeah, I can imagine your first arrival into Aspen must be absolutely terrifying in real life. It's terrifying enough in the sim. Working hard, boss, have you on my second monitor? You yeah, I'm very well, thank you. This morning, 
I have been planning my uh, group flight for the weekend after next. Thousand followers celebration. Um, and yeah, now I'm flying this. The only sad thing that happened today was that my second flying... No, it wasn't my second. But my flying lesson got cancelled due to weather. But it's fine. I just flew a pretend plane instead and didn't pay £200 an hour. Yeah, it's a good video, isn't it? Tim, uh, the corporate pilot dad, is fast becoming the uh, quite an oracle on the Concorde. Yeah, I went. I went to bed having spent about four hours with uh, with him, learning or trying to learn about how the fuel balancing works, and then I woke up to a deluge of messages about how he'd got it. <laughs> And then I was far too hungover to actually take it in. But I think I have now. You're off, Lucas. Okay, no worries. Thank you once again for your immense generosity. That is so nice of you. Thank you uh, once again. Yeah, and hope to see you. Hope to see you again. Have a good rest of your day. I was completely lost the first time arriving in Aspen. It was in the CRJ, so that was nice. <laughs> yes. Uh... Wouldn't mind getting one of those... De yeah, Delen, D-E-L-E-N. I think they're slightly overpriced for what they are. And I think if you're any good at all at DIY, you could probably fashion one yourself for a lot less money. But I'm, no I'm not, so it's money well spent. Yes, I am. Yeah, working towards my PPL. Yeah. Um, it's been sort of off and on. So I, so I started about 10 years ago, and then I stopped for various reasons. And I started again about three or four months ago. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do it this time. And it's, yeah, it's exciting. I'm sort of at the stage where I'm ready for my first solo, but the weather has not been uh, kind to us, so I haven't done it yet. It is busy, Martin, and it's busy because uh, Mr. MT320 very kindly raided us at the end of history. Where were you flying that, by the way? I've said I'm going Bravo Victor, so I'm gonna go Bravo Victor, but I don't think that's necessarily was the right choice. Oh yes, thank you. That'd be interesting. To... Can I show them on the stream? Be interested to see. Be particularly interested to see how closely the snow depths match the sim. See, I think I probably will love it once I'm up there, but I'm also absolutely terrified. I can't. I can't pretend not to be. I just think, God, what if something goes wrong? What if I forget this? What if it's, I, I imagine it's one of those things that right up until you do it is terrifying and then when you're actually doing it it just feels amazing thank you Stewie PC Aviation this aircraft is sick and it's going to be out hopefully in a few weeks time Heathrow to Gibraltar it was 09030 gusting 48 bloody hell What's the what's the um, what's the runway heading at Gibraltar? I can't remember. That sounds terrifying, though. Well, not terrifying, but hard work. I struggle with Gibraltar even on a nice calm day, to be honest. First solo. Let's hope you don't end up on that aviation. I won't, boss, because you can't, because they can't listen. They can't. You can't get um, UK ATC on there. Um, liveatc.net and I think that's where they get all of their stuff from yeah the weather will get better yeah for sure do your best to enjoy it because you only do your first solo once I know I know I will I think the more you know these bad weather days have been frustrating in a way but last time I went flying we had like 30 knot winds down the runway and it was bumpy as hell and I still did a, you know an alright job so I think that has built my confidence up and I think you know I'm flying next Monday next. If we have another day uh, where I can't solo, then so be it. It's just uh, if every circuit just makes me feel a bit bit less nervy about it. Oh, do they? Ah, they stand corrected then. Yes, you can show them. They're all taken on the ground. I'm not allowed to show my airplane though. Yes, I remember you saying. Okay. What we'll do is we'll get the plane in the air because unconscious people are itching to see the takeoff, and then I'll uh, yeah I'll have a look.
Now, I remember setting a heading. Don't remember if it was the runway heading for 2-2 left or not. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, and I'll do this as quickly as I can, is I'll just stop here, double check everything before we go, because it's good practice, you know. Uh, right. So... When we're heading for 2-2 left is 2-2-5. Yes, that is what I've set. Good. Um, and I'm going to read through the my little takeoff flow. Uh, so flaps should be set at 18. Trims. We're going to check the rudder and aileron trims are in the middle, and they are. And the elevator trim should be at the bottom of the green band, the lower end of it. Uh, we want to press the config check button, and we can't do that with the parking brake applied, so I'm going to release that briefly. No alarm is good. Uh, we're going to put the continuous ignition switches on A and B. Uh, we're going to put the AC pump on. Which I've got a feeling I forgot to do last time. Not auto, on. Um, landing and strobe lights can come on. So strobes up here. Landing are down here. TMS, we're going to confirm that that's on and takeoff mode is engaged and it is. Right, so... Let's do this. We're just going to fly runway heading initially. Uh, there's no one to tell us not to, and it'll give us time to get things set up for the initial leg. Uh, Jacob, hello, welcome. How are you? <clears throat> O'Hare traffic, United 4585, line up and take off 22 left, departure to the southwest. In Germany, it's even illegal to listen to ADC because of the. Fernmelder Geheimnis, telecommunication secrecy. Oh, okay. I'd love to have a listen to real Langen radar for one. Do you know, I've got a feeling, Matt might know the answer to this, but I've got a feeling that airband receivers are illegal in the UK as well. Are they? Thank you, Jenny. I'm glad you're still here. I really hope you don't get sacked because of me. Yeah. I did have one as a child. Right, it's going to line up. Now, I feel the need to make some excuses before actually taking off. Um, I haven't done that many flights in this plane. Not great at it, sometimes things go wrong. Um, but, you know, we'll get there. Okay, that's it, let's go. So 25% of N1 initially. And then what we want TMS to do is, to take off. is match that yellow TMS bug. And if we don't quite get it, the TMS will adjust our throttles, our power, to uh, get it right. Which is good. There you are, so I've let go of them now, and it's sorting itself out, which is nice. 80 knots cross -chained. Have a good shift, Jenny. V1. Power set, flex achieved. Rotate. Right, positive rate. Gear can come up. And we want initially a 10, 10 degree nose up pitch attitude, there or thereabouts. And we want to let our speed increase past the uh, final takeoff speed or whatever that red box is called, I can't remember. To about 200 knots. That rail yard. Look at that. Look at that plane. It tries to max. It was a little windy, yeah, a little. And I say we'll just fly runway heading, but look, we can see where we're going. Let's just have a fly at round to intercept that uh, inbound course to the VOR. Why not? I just, it's one of those planes that you just get a real buzz from after takeoff, you know? The FTO, safe high speed. Safe right. Flat. There we are. So now what we can do is we can engage the autopilot. 
we can pitch up to about 15 degrees. Can't find the click spot for the autopilot for some reason. Oh yeah, because there isn't one. It's down below, it's down here. So I just used the Z key, I've forgotten about that. And what we'll do, uh, what we, we want to climb at just over 2,000 feet per minute, that would be fine. So yeah, we can engage, we're in heading mode, we can engage VS mode, and we can engage VOR load, and then it will intercept this radial in radial force inbound. With Tim here, I'm very wary about calling these things, <laughs> and Matt, calling these things wrong. Radial is outbound from a VOR, right? <laughs> Hi, how can I buy this plane? It's not out yet, Matt, so uh, you'll need to keep an eye on the Just Flight website. It's coming out uh, later this month. Hopefully. Uh, right, so we're climbing nicely. We can reduce the speed to maintain 250 below 10,000, and the plane should keep our uh, our vertical speed going as it is. And you can see we're intercepting that VOR uh, course. Pat Breeze, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. So. Uh, TMS sync button we can press. What that'll do is it'll sync all of the engines to the power we've set on engine one. If uh, one is displayed in the master, which it is. Um, and if we want to adjust our V speed, our, uh, v v speed? our vertical speed, uh, we can do that with the sync button. But I'm quite happy with it for now. That's absolutely fine. So after takeoff checklist, flaps are retracted, engine air switches can come on. Probably could have come on a little bit earlier, to be honest, but anyway. Um, oh no, because we've got the APU air on, so it's fine. APU air off, and we can turn the APU off, and we can turn the AC pump off. And we can turn, the, well, the PTU is already off. It doesn't tell me to put it on. And that's it, so 10,000 feet, we should have passed that now. Yeah, passing through, going for 11,000. Landing lights can come off. I'm a little bit worried by those bings, but uh, we'll have a look in a minute. You're going to study again, boss. Maybe see you to... Yeah, oh, Martin, I'm sorry having to do so much work. See you this week. Yes, for the very pod giveaway stream. Yes, see you then, if not before. Good luck with your studying, boss. Hope it goes well. Don't worry about my speed. I'll worry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the sync mode, which will allow us to temporarily turn the autopilot off, set a new pitch attitude, uh, disengage the sync mode, and then we'll climb at the new selected VS. Um, improper pronunciation is allowed, but very encouraged for city names. There should be about five pictures of this. Oh, cool. Oh, God, what's been going on in my general? Have a look. I tell you what we'll do, I tell you what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll switch to IAS mode and we'll, once we hit 250 that's our good climb speed above um, 10,000 feet and we'll pitch, we'll let the plane adjust our pitch to maintain that speed and then I can have a look in Discord at Tim's pictures and whatever the hell's been going on in general. Well, I don't even know what this is in relation to. <laughs> right, anyway, pictures. Oh, was it because we were talking about how long it takes him to set up? I love it so much to do in this aircraft. There is, there is. Um, oh, we're about to hit that VOR, so what I'm going to do is just... Uh, set the outbound course a second we are following a radial outbound I know that much uh, I just need to get my plan up so I know what it is uh, 21267 now I suspect we should have gone into heading mode there but it sort of caught me off guard so we'll see yeah we'll just we'll set a heading now and we'll intercept it or is it going to do it without it's going to do it without Fine. Uh, 
Isn't the PTU for like in-flight emergencies? Emergencies or failures in the hydraulic system? Yes, I think it is. I think it is, but it still said it should be on. Well, it didn't say it should be on. It said I needed to turn it off, which, which strongly implies it should have been on. I need to look it up. I need to look it up, or for someone to tell me the answer, who knows. Uh, right, what are we doing? Oh yes, Tim's pictures. Oh wow. Uh, KJ, KJ, KXV, welcome. Thank you very much for the follow. Or is it KJK15? I don't know. But uh, yeah, welcome. Right. Let me share my screen with you. So this, this was when Tim was last in Aspen. Interesting. So it's not, the ramp is completely clear of snow. You'll see when we get there in the sim uh, that it isn't. Oh, that's an interesting plane. It's like a push prop this jet. Looking towards the approach end of runway 15. Nice. God, it is so beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful. And that's the big mountain off the end of runway 15. And that's why you can't go around. And there's no missed approaches, I guess. I'd love to go IRL. I'd love to. Thank you for sharing those. As Melon posted, he got a bit salty really fast. <laughs> so am I right in thinking that he couldn't hear what I was saying? It's just cross about what people were saying in the in the chat. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> oh, good. Well, as long as I'm in the clear. Okay. Anyway, looking back to what we're doing navigation-wise, there's 213 nautical miles uh, on this leg to the Newton VOR. So the Newton VOR is tuned in on Nav 2, I believe, on 12.5, yes. So what we'll do, and again, people who know more than me, tell me if I'm doing the wrong thing here, but my plan is to continue flying the outbound radial from the VOR that we're coming from until <coughs> we get a, a DME readout on here, at which point I'll tune that and we'll fly inbound to it. Is that that makes sense that's what I've been doing it works but is it realistic I suppose is my question you can go around I've stood on the ramp and watched airplanes go around they were in VOR, VFR conditions oh okay one of the charts says no missed approaches I think switch at the halfway point okay okay so leave it going Leave it on this one until we're halfway. All right, that sounds good to me. I've got a feeling you did tell me this, actually. You did tell me this, I've got. I'd be fast asleep with a blanket by <laughs> now. There she is. We haven't done that much admiring of the outside yet, so I do want to show you once again the textures, the dirt, the shape, the rivets. They have done such an incredible job here. Look. Look at the shiny, shiny as well. It's a beautifully, beautifully modelled thing. Okay, so Tim, I think this might dis I think you might be disappointed in me here. We are not on an airway, or at least, let me double check, we weren't necessarily, we're not following airways the whole way, we probably should have done. But in terms of the range between VORs, I couldn't make it work. So, we are flying direct from DePage, DePage, oh, whatever, to Newton, D, uh, Delta Papa Alpha to Tango November Uniform. Maybe shouldn't have said that publicly. <laughs> 
It's all right. Most people don't know who you work for, boss. <laughs> it's just flight, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just flight. Really have put in there. They have. They have. And honestly, the only major bug I found in all my time flying this is that. Oh, hang on. Did I ever arm my altitude? I didn't. I never do. But I'm in time. I've spotted it in time. If you don't arm it, it'll keep climbing. If you arm it, it'll level us out at uh, flight level 280. Should probably set standard pressure, to be honest, as well. Um, just in a nick of time. Yeah, the only major bug I've found is that if you fly um, the VREF, it drops below the glide slope. They're aware of it, they're working on it, it'll be fixed. And that's it. And that's in a beta product that is still probably three weeks away from release. You can't, you can't fold them. You really can't. You're still feeling the weekend. Was it a heavy one, Simon? What did you get up to? <laughs> Those poor passengers, why? What exactly have I done to upset the passengers, boss? Yeah, before I forget, do do come and join my Discord server if you haven't already. It's uh, it's full of nice people. Sudden change in VR. Oh, barely. Um, uh, yeah, come join my Discord. And also, if you like what I do here, come and uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. I do a lot of my streams over there still. Oh, we want to be going about max uh, 0.68, so I'll just bring the power back. Um... And, of course, my review videos, my tutorials, all of that sort of things. Lots of good stuff on the Discord channel as well. Not heavy drinking-wise, but just early mornings on both Friday and Saturday. Oh, okay. I hope you were, hope you were doing something fun. And didn't have to get up early for something that was not fun. What's lunch between friends? What's OG Stewie? Oh, let me show you the cabin, by the way. I'm going and see, and see how they're doing back there. There are no preset views for the cabin, and you can't get back there uh, at the moment. I don't. I assume that's something that will come, but I don't know. But you can have a look inside with the drone, and this is one of the best modelled uh, cabins I've ever seen. I think. Flying from VOR to VOR is allowed as long as both VORs can be received. Example of when it can't be done without GPS is if the VORs are 300 miles apart but the range is only 100 miles for each VOR. So is there a procedure, Tim, in a plane like this or in a plane in, in the state of this one where there is no, no option but to fly VOR to VOR? There are plenty of places where you cannot fly from one VOR, certainly in the UK, from one VOR to the next VOR and have them both be within range. In fact, like this one, we're now out of range. We're now out of range of both VORs. What do we do? I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep flying the same heading and wait until we pick up the uh, um, inbound... Well, wait until we pick up the signal from the VOR we're flying to. But we've only done about 50 miles. So that's a very short range VOR we Radar vectors, right, okay. Oh, zero gravity, oh, sorry, zero G. I thought it was OG, yeah. That's ah, fine, it's fine. <laughs> the problem with MSFS is that some VORs have wrong ranges, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's fine. I've got my little uh, GPS cheater up, so it's all good. Does Navigraph fix that? Does it? So then this is accurate, then, that uh, the DuPage VOR only has like a 40 mile range or something. Uh, but flying can be done when not in radar contact and still be on an IFR flight plan. So you could just fly a heading then, assuming there's no ATC, as there isn't at the moment, even though we're in controlled airspace. You could just keep flying your outbound heading until such time as you picked up the next VOR. Is that right? Do 
This isn't one of those things where you're that, that having the Navigraph app open during the flight would help, is it, by chance? The Nav Data Center. I'm just going to open it. Uh, it wants to update it, so I hope this doesn't break. Yes, yeah, so and if not, they won't clear you on that route. Okay. Thank you. Well, there's no point keeping that uh, last VOR tuned in on Nav 1, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tune Newton, 112.5. And one, two, that's all right. And we can pre-tune uh, the VOR after, which is Columbus on one 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 decimal. Awesome. Trolls, good afternoon, boss. And generic pilot, when you both arrived at the same time. Welcome. How are you both? <laughs> yeah, Trolls, when are you going to finish up? Okay, so, it, so let's just have a look at this then. So the Newton VOR, no, that's the one we're going inbound to, isn't it? The DuPage VOR, which we're 63 nautical miles away from, does have a nautic 40 nautical mile range. So it is accurate. It is accurate. I should have checked this with my flight planning, shouldn't I, really? Mind you, there aren't particularly any other options going west. I guess we're stuck, stuck with what we've got. Where's EKYT? I'll book, okay. Yeah, nice change. Very nice change. Not that I have any scenery for it in any sim, so I won't be able to come and see you, but still. As long as you're having a nice time. That's nice. How's school going? How's ATC school going? Thought I could use a chill evening. Yeah, I don't blame you. Don't blame you. Well, well, I believe scenery exists since Ben had some. Oh yeah, he flew there, didn't he? In P3D. Yeah. But I might have to. I might have to do a bit of Concord practice tonight. I think if I'm doing any flying. I fly the Concord to Albor, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I don't think my immersion could cope with it. Never mind yours. Now, I've become a little bit distracted and haven't looked at my checklist, so I'm just going to see that I've missed, I haven't missed anything. We should be checking. Oh, I should have pressed the MCT button on the MCT, on the, uh, not, oh goodness me, TMS, MCT on the TMS, that's what I should have done, rather than leaving it in take off mode. So what that's done is it's sex, it, it has set bugs. I think for the uh, for the maximum continuous thrust, which we don't need because we're done with our climb. But that would have been useful during the climb. I'm up for Concord practice if I'm. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Oh, cool. I'll see how I feel. I'll see how I see how I go. But yeah, um, school's going well. Got my first periodical report, and my instructor said he thinks I'm on the learning curve quite nicely. Oh, good. Who's boss? That's always reassuring, isn't it, when someone in the know says you where you should be. No Concord tutorial, please. I can't deal with more Concords at LL. <laughs> I don't think I will do a Concord tutorial. I don't think I will. Tim's done a couple. You can blame him. <laughs> Any idea on time for the Concord practice? Um, I'd say probably about four hours from now, if I do it. What have you done, Alex? Oh. <laughs> did you just, did 
Did you seriously time boy tech out? <laughs> yeah, he did for 15, only 15 seconds. <laughs> oh dear, you see. This is, it's one of these many telltale signs that the power, the power is going to the mod's head. <laughs> but I like it. Hardlined, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Oh, you won't be on. Oh, okay. I may do one more. On coaches here on Climb December, that's it. Yeah, I think by the time I finish this flight, finish my VFR group flight trip, it will be dinner time. And then I might do a little bit more afterwards, but uh, yeah, not, not before then. So let's see how. What, ooh, we're a bit off course, you see. We're a bit off course now. Let's adjust that heading mode. I thought by magic leaving it on... Oh no, it's not even on VOR lock mode, is it? It's just flying. It's just all holding our... Uh, um, wings up, I think. So, the Newton VOR has a range of 40 nautical miles as well. So, we're not going to be within range of that for a little while. Um, can't decide whether I can be bothered to fly or I should just play some strategy games. It's been a while. Then you should fly, boss. Caffle, welcome! How are you? Will, are you still here? If you are, how have the Concords at Heathrow been going? Because I'm... Well, the long and the short of it is I don't have the balls to fly the Concorde on that sim at the moment, but I'm getting more and more tempted. Um, AI Mavi 08, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Hey, firm, they don't understand standard track SM. Okay, it's not great. Uh, come fly with me simulations. Welcome. How are you? I feel like it's been a while. It's good to have you back. Should we have some tunes? What do people fancy tune-wise, bearing in mind it's epidemic sound, so you can't have anyone you've ever heard of? In other words, give me an era or a genre, and we shall play something. I was speaking in a loud and excited voice because I missed you. <laughs> oh, that's quite sweet. It's quite sweet. It's quite... Nor do they pass me an EOBT, which is required. They suffer with the Compton clearance of nine left, too. Right. I didn't know an estimation of clock's time was required. Didn't know that. 80s, 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 90s, 80s jazz. Okay, let's go for some 80s to start, start off with. me simulations thank you boss very much indeed for the sub much appreciated death metal or 80s <laughs> hang on can't find me winner. here we are 1980s epidemic sound has some good quite good 80s music but... very quiet, isn't it? I don't know why. Oh, it's because I've turned my browser down for some reason. Does that feel about right to you? It feels about right to me. <laughs> First one, then the other side. More bass. <laughs> don't know if I can do that. I can give you more volume though, which is basically the same thing. Oh, 
Crank the EQ up and crank up the low frequency. I don't have an EQ though. Unless Windows comes with one that I don't know about. More sound settings? No, I don't I don't have an EQ boss. Pretty sure. I'm at a loss to think what 80s jazz is unless we're headed towards Jacques Lucier. Never heard of Jack this year, shame to say Alex. This is a tune. I almost think I need to start an 80s bangers playlist. I'm going to. 80s bangers. There we are, this is on it. More to come. <laughs> Tree Tree win. Second time saying hello. I'm... Oh, sorry. Sorry, boss. I missed you. I missed your message. Welcome. How are you doing? Someone gifted you a sub, I believe. Scott, I think. I think. I don't know. It's been a bit mad here today. But uh, welcome, boss. <laughs> ah, that's useful. Thank you, Voite. I'm going to save that. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you, boss. How are you? Thank you, come fly with me. I like it. Is, is there a VATSIM link with the similar information in it? Well, not. Because, yeah, listening to what you've said, I'm quite glad I haven't flown Concord on VATSIM yet. <coughs> B Crawley 57, welcome. Thanks very much for the follow. Got soaked on my 10 minute bike ride home, so I'm just warming up with a bit of tea. Oh, bad luck. And well done on well done on uh, trying to rectify it with tea. That is the correct uh, thing to do. It's well done. We're going to make you an Englishman yet. Yeah, it's not ideal doing this in the drone camp. We'll go outside. Herbal tea though, since I've had plenty of caffeine at school. That's also, that's fine, that's fine. Let me just check the Aspen Meta, see if we're actually going to be able to get in there or not. No wind, that's good. Ten statue miles, clear! Couldn't ask for more than that, could you? Right, Roaring Port Visual it is. Phil, but I was wondering if you could show me all the features in the fly pad. Sure, well, well next time I do an A320 stream, pop by and I'll, I'll certainly go through what I know, although they have updated it fairly recently, um, so I'm not quite as au okay with it as I used to be. Aspen does have an amazing approach, and we're going to be doing I'm going to show you the... Uh... Oh, there were two things I wanted to do. I wanted to see who was actually flying. Because in the mad rush to get started... Have I not even... I haven't even started the Lanta one new. So yeah, I want to show you the Lanta to see who's doing what, who's around us. And then I want to sh uh, show you the arrival. Hang on a sec while I get the windows up. Here we go. Let's just add a flight plan. We'll worry about screenshots and that later. So, we are here. Just about to intercept our course toward... Mm, Atlanta's drawn it a bit weird. 
Um, but yeah, Newton. And yeah, everyone's ahead of us, I think. Yeah, so Oski Boy's ahead of us, ahead of him we have Marker, ahead of him we have Wojtek, ahead of him we have Sam. So yes, five of us. See, this is odd. I'm really near the Newton VOR now, and I'm not picking it up. Have I got... Eh? Oh... I might possibly have been a bit of an idiot and missed a VOR out. No, I haven't. It should be Newton next. 112.5. Bit confused. Anyway, we'll just adjust our heading. Remain on course. And it's all going to be good. Paul! Welcome, boss! Nice to see you. How you doing? Wait, let me get rid of that turbo lantern for you. And I was going to show you the arrival. Okay, so here's our route. Which does actually have an additional VOR on it that isn't in my flight plan, so I don't quite know how that's happened. Uh, so yeah, we are actually overhead Cedar Rapids, or approaching Cedar Rapids. But the reason we're here, let's have a look at the Roaring Fork visual. So the final VOR on our flight plan is Red Table, VBL. And from there, as you can see, we make a sweeping left turny type approach. I'm not entirely sure what altitude we should uh, start this at, so it's going to be a little bit of trial. Oh no, it says recommended 12,500. That'll be it. And then we'll just stick the nose down, hope we can see the runway. That's the plan. But yeah, not like most approach charts you will have seen. And this is what runway 15 should look like uh, on the Sorry, let me just catch up on something. Oh, the iPad in the BAE. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll show you what's on there. Um, that. Oh, Tim, sorry, I missed you. I uh, say goodbye. Yes, okay. Talk to you soon, boss. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, just nipping off for a bit. Got to feed my uncle's cat. Everybody behave. Think what Ben would do and then don't. Good advice. <laughs> See you soon, Alex. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have a look at the iPad in a minute. Saw your video about the fuel management in this Concorde. Oh, Tim's video. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, JJ King. Welcome, and thank you very much for the follow. The pink guys have arrived. Yeah, sorry, I was too slow to get rid of Atlanta. Aussie flies as well. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. How are you doing? Concorde Paris to a man in 2 hours 50. Anyone know how? No. That's some, that sounds incredible. It must have gone supersonic over land then, but I thought it wasn't allowed to do that. A genuine patient. And not hit the mountains, quite crucial. Yes, yes we are on that scene indeed. Yeah. Right, let's have a look then. Let's have a look. So, we turn it on here. And, uh, basically this is where you open your doors. So you can open your forward door, your aft door, your... Uh, after service door, cargo doors and your forward service door. You can bring your ground power over. And it's also where you load your passengers. Uh, you can see your centre of gravity there. Uh, you fill in your zero fuel weight, total fuel weight and that sort of thing. And you can also make announcements, which I actually haven't tried. But... There they are. A bit quiet, but uh, yeah. Arm doors, disarm doors. And then in the settings, now not all of these are implemented yet. Uh, you can have, you can turn various things off. These don't work yet. Uh, but there's some cool things here. So announcements on and off, pilot callouts on and off. Uh, you can change your gauge refresh rate to sort out your performance. Put your pilots in the cockpit. You can turn on interior. Ooh, hang on, that is clickable. Interior cabin is clickable. I'll have to have a look at that off screen. And you can add auxiliary fuel, fuel tanks. I don't know what auto ground mode it does. But yes, it's quite a full featured uh, little EFB. No, it wasn't my video. <laughs> now I haven't done one. Well. 
I assumed you were talking to Tim, who's now gone anyway. <laughs> Guru, an hour till my multiple choice quiz that I'm seriously underprepared for. Fingers crossed I can use my common sense. Oh, what's this for? What is this for? Is this for Heathrow? Ninety-one views. I know, I know. YouTube partner. <laughs> so you have to have an average of seventy-five views. We're not, we're not close to that yet. We're not close to that yet. But yeah, I think this is the most views I've ever had on Twitter. And really, it's it's well, it's partly that MT three twenty right was mostly here for you. Actually, thank you for the raid. But also, thank you for sticking around. You know, sometimes you join a raid, you have a quick look, and you think, Nah, I'm off. Got that. So yeah. Thank you for staying. What's this Santa Claus type of music? This is... This is an 80s playlist. What? What do you mean Santa Claus? Doesn't sound very Christmassy to me. It does not have a takeoff. Oh, actual uni work. Oh, God. Yeah, how was the rest of your Cross the Pond book? I never did make it back. Look away a minute. Thank you. It's all good. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to look back. Will the FMS, FMS, FMC, FMS be simulated? Yes. In fact, I believe that should be on the next preview build, which should be out next week. So yeah, certainly by release. Boring. Yeah. I watched you and Ben, and I had zero regrets about not doing it. <laughs> See, I initially thought he meant something like a pub quiz. But then he was talking about being unprepared for it. And I thought, nah, you don't prepare for a pub quiz. And then I instantly assumed that sim because it's basically all he does. <laughs> but no, it's got a real life as well at university. No, HK, no, I didn't I didn't even apply for a slot this time. Cross the land did me in. Ooh, we're in range of the VOR. Let's go back to VOR level. Sounds more like the training montage of Rocky IV. Yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> Simon, you have to leave because of some town hall business. Oh, bad luck. Have a fun flight and a safe arrival to us, but I might rewatch the approach. Okay. Well, have a good afternoon, boss, and thank you for coming by. Appreciate it. You had a school party on the second. That sounds good. Oh, but you had to give... Why did you have to give it a miss? Oh, cross the pond, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I went out for my birthday. The main reason I didn't apply for a slot was because I was going out for my birthday on Saturday night and I thought, I will be absolutely knackered if I do cross the pond. Oh, it's the plane. I thought someone was heating outside. Yeah, we just over speeding it a little bit, nothing to worry about. Riley, it's flying beautifully, boss. I really, really like it. I really do. It's a great, great plane. Yeah, me over speeding the 106. But, as I have had confirmed by a real world CRJ pilot, a little bit of over speed never hurt anybody. Yeah, in my opinion, it's very much worth it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, this is the best airliner in MSFS. And it's not even finished. It is true. It is true. And let me explain the logic behind it, Twelves. If a little bit of overspeed was bad, There'd be no point having a warning. There'd be no point having this red and white striped thing. Because you'd be a goner instantly. Right? The reason you have the warning sound when it does is because at that stage you're absolutely fine. You just don't want to go higher. Best jet airline. I wouldn't. I have nothing but jet. 
What is the engine for? What do you mean, what's the engine? So the over the overspeed warning is is not so much because of the engine, but because of the actual stress on the airframe. A few weeks, I think, people. I don't have an exact date. I don't think they have an exact date. But the impression I get. Um, let me just check my emails so I'm not talking rubbish. Hold on. I think it's going to be later this month, next month, maybe something like that. Uh, oh, I've got so many emails. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a release date. I don't know where I'm getting late April from. <laughs> But I think around them, I think. <clears throat> Pretty sure it's not April the 8th. Uh, did you see my 787 Landy? I think I did alright considering it's 2.30 in the morning and I was like, Oh, Riley, I never watched it. This is the perfect opportunity. Come on, let's watch it now. When you posted in flights and videos, right? Yes, got it, boss. We're all going to judge Riley's 747 landing at the end of his crossing of the pond. When I can work out how to show it to you. Hold on. No, it's not working. Make it big. Oh, boss, that looks beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, it looked beautiful, and your wheels stayed on the runway. Therefore, what more could you want? Did you enjoy it in the end, or was it? I remember, oh gosh, so I got home from the pub and I saw Riley and Moradin in the voice chat. And I thought, oh, it's Riley and Murray, did not go and sail And I was absolutely happy, and I shouldn't have done it. Um, anyway, did you have a nice time, boss? I don't remember what you said when I spoke to you. It did veer, but it looked smooth. <laughs> yeah, it is. Check screenshots, okay. They're nice. They are nice. Look at that. I don't think Captain Chris is here, but that's also a pocket screen. Very nice. So, Sam, Sam and Mark, did you both go for a mid midway? Oh yeah, and there he is. There he is in the background. Nice. Good bit of offset usage, that is. Yes, I gathered you were referring to the DC-6 when you said uh, it's the best jet aircraft. Okay, so we're 4.7 nautical miles away from our next viewer. Uh, Nelson. Nelson? Newton. So the one we want to be going to after that is OLU Columbus, which will tune in on uh, NAV2 111.8. And we're going to tune the outbound course from this one initially. Uh, 191. No, that can't be right. Eh? Oh no, it's 191 nautical miles on a course of 257. I 
I like the delay before it starts to head to, so you can mess around a little bit. Um, I'm guessing that's accurate. I'm guessing that's accurate. Voite was keeping you entertained. That's very nice. I did enjoy it in the end. We'll definitely go for an earlier slot in the future. Though. Yeah. 2 a.m. It's very, very hard to keep any level of enthusiasm. If I could, I'd ban non RNAV capable planes from that sit there, I said it. Why, boss? I thought you were quite open minded and all for Vatsim being an inclusive, welcoming community to people flying planes of all ages, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, this is why I was hoping and praying that there'd be no ATC on Drupal. And I wouldn't have even done it on Vatsim if Voita hadn't put me into it. I'm not doing the conference. I am, but not those people. <laughs> so not Sam and Wojtek. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I think we need to then make sure that Twelves never got gets onto the Vatsim Board of Governors, eh? Oh yeah, I'm with you with that, yeah. Text pilots are immersion killers. And that's just as another pilot without even having to think about uh, actually communicating as a controller. Right, I'm going to nip to the loop. I'll be back in a minute. I'm back. <clears throat> right, what have I missed? Oh god, I've, yeah, I shouldn't have said that about the text pilots, should I? Uh, <laughs> are we taking some? You need to take 77s to uh, Alberg tonight. Alberg. Yeah, that is true. That is true, HK. It is it is good for beginners and people who are nervous about using using voice for it. That is true. How's your controlling going, Paul? Are you are you, uh, are you branching out from uh, uh, Edinburgh a little bit? You did Glasgow, didn't you? 
There it is. So I totally get why people use text on that scene. I get why people use text, but yet they're impossible to deal with as an approach. Yeah, it must be it must be stressful. It must be stressful. Oh, I see even I do hybrid pilot like space in the air if mum calls me to spend it like more than so I Ah makes sense. Makes sense. Spoilers, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. This is uh, this is proving more controversial than I had anticipated. Uh, not all vets in. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't dream of saying vets in text pilots are bad. I just personally, as a pilot, prefer. Like you get better situational awareness when everyone's talking. I think I personally don't read text. I can't read the text and fly the plane and listen to what's going on. I find that really hard. Um, but yeah, I do get the rationale behind it. I do get why people like it. I'm certainly not saying they're bad people. I just would rather hear and talk. And I can imagine as a controller with loads of aircraft, it must be. Must be. Started my sessions from hell and eager. Oh really? Are you actually are you actually doing it or are you still in the sort of um the sweatbox stage? I use text for Unicom sometimes which is fair and the centre I get it, but for approach tower it's just I, I okay yeah, I can understand both both these things. Both these if you don't know how to use voice, there are more than enough tutorials in the world. It always connects to the like. <laughs> Text help me control my tongue in terms of not talking about it. <laughs> Personal preference is not a problem. Even I have become voice, but text has been my lifesaver. Yeah, 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 I can, I can understand. I do get it. I do get it. Um, well, see, I thought it would be sweatbox, but no, live network on a Sunday afternoon. Hey, good green. And is the um, is the passive aggression part of the uh, part of the Gatwick training, or is that just something that you develop naturally as time goes on? Text as a controller is just hard. Like, yeah. Text or no text? Can we all agree that people who say nothing on Unicom are the worst? Absolutely, boss. Absolutely. That can unite text and non-text pilots if I can. <laughs> I know, it is controversial. It's just my first couple of experiences of Gatwick, and they haven't all been like My first couple of experiences of Gatwick. <laughs> there were some people on there who were being quite passive-aggressive to people who were clearly beginners, and it put me off flying the hood. I haven't, I haven't heard anything like that for a while, so it's not a fair, it's not a fair generalisation. That was my unifying middle of the road, Simon. <laughs> you did well, Scott. I was impressed by that. I, I did think. Oh, I wish I'd. Oh yeah, there's nobody there. You'd rather find from Heathrow than get with most days. Why is that? Batsum is always dodging. Yeah. I don't know, I've had more good experiences there than bad, to be fair. And Heathrow has, on Unicom is just a nightmare. It is just a nightmare. Particularly weekend mornings. And late nights as well, actually. This music is very appropriate to this full delivery, I think. Clueless pilots and understandably upset controllers, right? Yeah. 
Yes, I have that. Oh. Hey, trust me, yesterday afternoon people were wishing they'd flown from Heathrow and not that way for <laughs> 90 minutes. I wish I'd pop by. I wish I'd pop by for. If I'd known, I would have done. <coughs> not what you want to unwind after a day No. No. But I feel that. Um, I don't know, just flying in London generally is not what we want to have to I know, I know, it's crazy hard. It's like we only have to descend about half as far as we, uh, as we climb. You told Benny was 1700 so he didn't pop past. <laughs> really? A tip. When flying into Aspen, a tip is to be fully configured at red tape. The descent rate is so high due to the steep approach, the airplane does not like to slow down. That's our SOP when flying into Aspen. Last time was two weeks ago, I had to the start, so we just had like five extra days. And it's just a drop off in return. Mm. It always baffles me how people at LL always get the wrong ways around. I know! I know, I don't know how to do it. It's more than anywhere else. Um, yeah. Mystery. If I loaded into Heathrow on Unicom, I'd probably dot wallop half the way. <laughs> you definitely would, yes. <laughs> how to escape a large airport. Make sure that the traffic just starts building up so you aren't behind a crowd with stress control. Yeah. Well, so get there before the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, there's flight radio 24, but there's also a great tip. I know, but like, even if you, even if you get the left and right wrong, I don't, you know, I don't care about that. But they get the direction wrong as well, like more than anywhere else, and that's just a question of looking at the wings, like. Good music. I wasn't stressed. I was slowly getting drunker the more traffic there was. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good idea, actually. That is a good idea. I was saying, so, who was it? No, it was Will. Will was trying to persuade me to do ATC. And I said, I just, I don't have the patience. I honestly, I I joke about the passive aggressive controllers at Gatwick based on the two experiences. But realistically, I would become like that and worse within like an hour of starting. It just Plus, who wants to be a glorified thanks anyway? That's why I don't know. <laughs> Dreary, hello, can you show me the external view? Yes, of course. Proper zoom on the exterior coming right up, boss. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> You're never getting a pushback again from any of <laughs> <laughs> Once I got warned on Vatsim because of freaking FS slabs, which apparently can't break, and I veer off into an active runway. The toe brakes do take some getting used to. There we go. Oh, the flyby. The longer you squeeze them, the harder they uh, break. Oh, I mistakenly, I, I was saying that you were trying to persuade me to become an air traffic controller, but it wasn't you, it was Will. Okay. 
I misspoke. I took your name in vain. You think it's just KK that's <laughs> <laughs> uh. This happened in Sydney, but he was also a sinner, so he didn't get all angry. Oh, good, 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 good. I use joystick, not toe brakes, even when... Well, I used to. I used to, yeah, and it does take some getting used to. Same thing, you have to squeeze the trigger for a certain amount of time before it doesn't. Really does it. Just go somewhere not in the UK. The way it's going. The way it's going. I might have to. Even when I fly, I spread my name around the community, the fact you take it. You think I'd be good at it? Do you think? Oh, that's very nice of you to say. Especially after what I said. Yeah, it's just, it's never particularly been an ambition. I don't really have time to do the flying up on You know what I mean? Let alone, let alone that as well. But never say never. Um, easy 21 kilo lima. Thank you very much for the follow. And smudge. I think I missed your. Yeah, nice to have you over here. Sometimes left, sometimes right. Don't really know how it works. Just when departing or arriving at level uh, three, make sure to choose the other one. Yeah, this is exactly it. Yeah, all I know is that they swap at three. All those gauges. I know, but they're it's, they're not. You know, it's not as complicated as it looks. I got this preview built, and honestly, I was a bit taken aback because I I wanted it because obviously I want a new plane. It's exciting and I want to show people. But I did look at it and think, oh my god, what have I taken on here? How long is this going to take to learn? And it's not that bad. It's really not. These are all pieces. You know, the engine gauges here. They're all pieces of information that you might get on a ICAS or an ECAM display. Nothing particularly new and yeah you've got your six pack well, that's an eight pack here it's yeah it's it's not as bad it's not as bad as it looks to learn <clears throat> all right uh nothing to see here i'm just gonna I'm just gonna go into heading mode i wasn't really paying attention it's ironic isn't it that i was just saying oh you know it's, it's not that bad to fly and we've just We've gone out of range of the uh, of the VOR, and uh, yeah, totally off course now. Totally off course, but it's fine. It's fine. Well, soon we'll be in range of Columbus, and then we'll get to. I'm rather overcorrecting here. Two eight zero should do us. Derpy, Emma, welcome. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, just back from catting. No need to go anywhere else. So I can continue. Whoops, I mean start on that bottle of wine. <laughs> nice. I've said I wasn't going to drink for a good few days. But I might have a beer later. I might. How are the aerodynamic properties of the 4 APU tin can? <laughs> the aerodynamic properties of the 4 APU tin can are delightful. They're really, yeah, it's really, really good. It flies beautifully. Absolutely. One second about to start. Okay, 12 season. Yeah, the stupid keyboard brake deflection, like anything below 0.5 equals brake failure. And you slam the brakes, but no response to access in SIP. And anything above 0.7 is the most sensitive like that. Yeah, it, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. You think this is bad? Come fly the Felis 747-200 with me, boss. I would love to fly the Felis 747-200. Are they bringing it to MSFS? And if not, why not? And a Jetstar A320 with IE engine. Oh, right, so quite uh, oomphy. Quite oomphy. Is that a word? It's not. Yeah, I mean, like any plane without auto throttle, it takes a while to get your head around the speed. Just Flight are bringing... Oh, are they? I think it was their one that I had, like, back in the FS2004 days, and I loved it. I really loved it.
maybe it wasn't. I can't remember. Yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a pog plane. Yeah, seven four seven two hundred three hundred for FS two thousand and four. Pretty sure that's the one. I would pick. This one. Long slow day. Ugh, bad luck. But I'm glad you're home. Kick, kick off your shoes. Watch a bit of the A one four six action. Which will remain in development forever. Why do you say that? Has it been in development longer than this? Next chatted message after Peter. Even their A three hundred B four two hundred. What? <laughs> Their P3D jets have been in development for a good while. Oh, really? See, I've taken my finger off the pulse with P3D a little bit. Oh, the 747 Classic. Oh, yes. A300, B4200. Yeah. These are all P3D projects, right? So is the plan for the 747-200 to bring it to P3D and then bring it to MSFS? That's madness in this one, so isn't it? Bringing a B3D plane out for the MSF hospital? I reckon they might change their mind on that. Shows the same page for almost two years or three years. Oh wow, that is slow, that is slow. Now, Alex, do you fancy having a go at that, um, what was it called? Erdl? Or something like that, that Wordle type thing that you found. Fancy having a go at that? Or we could just do Wordle on stream. We could try that. I've forgotten what it's called. Yeah, either or. You're going to have to send me the links there. Oh, the Fokker Fellowship. Yeah, I got the impression that's doing all right. I think. Welcome back, Trills. Time to fold some laundry while the plane flies itself. Nice. Sounds like a very productive place. Oh, you may have overpromised with her that it's once daily. Oh, okay. But we haven't done it today. Or does it just come online at a certain time? Your overhead the mountains and the slopes look good. good. Twirdle, that's the one, yeah. Let's do Twirdle. Oh, except it's not loading. really annoying. Alright, I'm going to have to download another browser, aren't I? What should we get? Firefox? What's the best second browser these days? I know Wordle. I don't know Twordle. I do Wordle every day, and there's something else called Hurdle. But this is one that you do as a stream together. It's quite good. Also, I'm just trying the wits, just trying the wiki games. Uh, Jacob, when will this plane be available? I don't know. A few weeks, I believe. Oh, will it? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to get Firefox. I'm just going to download Firefox. Oh, Brave. Sorry, I thought you were telling me I was being Brave. Uh, sorry, I've got the Firefox installed now. I've had good experiences with Firefox. 
Any news for FMC work in progress? Yes, a little bit. Should hopefully, I think, be in the next build. So hopefully in about a week's time I'll have my hands on it. So yeah, we're heading to another VOR with uh, 40 nautical mile range. These are rubbish, these VORs right here, aren't they? I haven't ever played the wiki game. No, I don't know it. I've never heard of it. Okay, here we go. I think it's based that all wiki pages with any hyperlinks eventually link back to the philosophy page of anything. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued. All right, HK, lovely to see you. Uh, see you soon. Hope you smash this plane at Asper. Thank you, boss. <laughs> see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Let me just pick this up on the old screen. <clears throat> Window capture, window capture. Good choice of music, thank you, glad you've enjoyed it. Oh no, I don't want that one. That one, there we go. Okay, here we go. So the idea is you work together to guess letters in a word that I have picked. So, uh, let me just close this just in case it shows you. So I'm gonna pick a word and between you type single letters in the chat, but obviously it helps if you work together to do it. Um, so let me just adjust my course a second. Because it would be really, really nice to fly towards the VOR. Um, 253, and we should be within range at any time now. And then I'll be able to concentrate on Twerbo. <laughs> I'd like to buy a valve. Simcell, sorry I missed you. Welcome, how are you doing? We're just, uh, we're flying the BAE 146, a preview build. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little game of Twerdle, which is a, a Wordle type game for Twitch. Uh, one on one point eight. Should be in range now. And we are, yes. Here we are, lock. Okie dokie. So I'm going to pick a word and then I'm going to have a go at this one. Right, let me just show you the how to play. So the stream range is a five letter secret word, done it. Each round chat must guess one letter at a time what the word is. When a round starts, any single letters written in chat count as a vote. The letter with the most votes gets put on the grid. At the end of each row, the blocks will color in to reveal how close chat is to the secret word. Beige means the letter is not in the word. Orange means it is in the word and green means that the letter is in the correct place. It is advised that chat try to write actual words. If you want to use this as a hands-free BRB screen, click auto. That's a good idea. Okay, how many fill BAs for a foul? Oh, no one entered, what? Right, come on, when it goes. <laughs> That's a good starter, yeah. But you have to type individual letters. Yeah, vowels are free. No filbios required. 
Sim Sale, thank you very much indeed for the follow. Much appreciated. Okay, so next letter. Wait, 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 it's too soon, too soon. You can go now. <laughs> wait, though, otherwise anti spam will stop you guessing. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. What if you try and do it before the round starts? You're doing some good working together. Next letter. <laughs> oh my goodness me! Another raid! Scruffy Tam or Scruffy Tam, thank you very much indeed. Welcome, welcome to the channel. We're just, um, we're having a little game of Twirdle, um, but we're going to stop. We're going to stop uh, a moment after this letter. Um, Thank you all very much for being here. How was your stream? What were you up? Did you get up to? Um, yes, well. <laughs> so yeah, this is a a build a beta build of the upcoming Just Flight uh, the AE one four six, and we're taking it from Chicago O'Hare to Aspen, and we're going to do the Roaring Fork visual approach, which I've never done before. So it's going to be interesting, I believe. But so far, so good. So, number one in the category, are we? Jesus Christ, it's all a bit much today, it's all a bit too exciting. Great, <laughs> 155 years, I'm not used to this sort of thing. Stream was awesome, thanks. Flying between two oceans, the islands between the Indian and the Pacific Oceans, Papua New Guinea. Oh, nice. Do you know, I did a group fly around Papua New Guinea um, with some Phil and Silver people last was it a couple of weeks ago absolutely spectacular out there isn't it absolutely um right so people think this word is asthma but we will see that's amazing i didn't even how do you even see that that's so, that's so cool getting crowded in here people don't forget your distancing <laughs> yeah tam thank you so much for the rain very very much Right, come on, next letter, next letter. And while you guess, I'm going to show the newcomers around this plane. Will, thank you so much for gifting uh, gifting um, a sub. Forgive my pronunciation, is it Scruffy or Scruffy? Well, lovely meeting you as well. And uh, yeah, welcome to Club Philbert. Is it Star? Oh, you know what? It's probably because I don't have the window up. But no, it's, yeah, the stream was stuck, but it has worked. Okay, I'll, I've learned now. I won't do that again. I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> there are indeed four engines, yes. Or, as some people are calling them, four hair drives or four APUs. It's a cool plane. It's a really cool plane. Asp on the famous screwing screwing resort. Skiing resort. <laughs> Cartoon pilot, Iowa Scotsman, thank you both very much for the follows. For the follows. Five APUs, yes. That's true, those were Yeah, it's all gone a bit wrong this game, isn't it? Okay, Aspo is what we've got so far. So we've got one more letter to go. And for those of you who have just arrived, once the round starts, which will be any second now, all you have to do is uh, is type a single letter in the chat and it will tell you at the end of the round uh, which ones are in the right place, which ones are in the wrong place and which ones are just plain wrong. Scruffy Tam as in Scruffy Tam, awesome. But call me whatever, I've been called worse, I promise. <laughs> so don't pick any letters you like now. <laughs> A330 new update was just announced for Wednesday. Oh, that is hog. And they, they, so they're doing wing flex. They're updating the version of the flyby one, right? Or the 
played by uh, whatever it is. What else uh, is coming in the new um, new version? Do we know? Okay, shall we check the word? So you've got an A in the right place and an S and an O in the wrong place. You haven't missed the bangers, Geeby. You haven't. You haven't, but we will have them later on. That's a good idea. Right, before we do the next guess, I'm just going to sort out my flying a little bit. Uh, so the next way, next course we want is 251 outbound from this VOR. And the next VOR we want is LBF, which is North, North Platt. 117.4. So I'll you that. And then I can press 174. 117. 4. Got to run for now. Have to eat and head to work. It was nice meeting everyone. Nice meeting you. Uh, thanks again. And yeah, see you soon, Scrum. We'll include the newest flying bar. Nice. Avios Arson. Interesting guesses. Can't be Arson there. No, it can't be either of those. Okay, next word, uh, next guess is there. No! <laughs> Hello, Nikki! It can't be Avios. It cannot be Avios. And I, because you're beginners, I'm going to explain this to you. The orange letters are in the word but in the wrong place. The green letters are in the word but in the right place. And it can't be Avios or the Overview Green. Nice aircraft. It is Simsal, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a lovely aircraft. I think this is the best jet airliner for MSF by a long stretch. And it's not even finished yet. This is still a beta build. <laughs> oh, Paul, you are nasty. <laughs> oh, dear. I am right, Okay, next letter. Come on. Come on, team. I am smart and totally saw that right after saying my guess. Well, you've done well with the first letter. You've done well. It's good teamwork. Yeah, there's no end. Ooh, it's a draw between A and R. We're going to try that again. Going to give you a little bit more thinking time. A little bit. I'm going to push the button in five, four, three, two, one. Go. Set a rose. Okay. <laughs> Sabus agrees with a rose. Okay. Alright, so it's an R. Right, okay. Seems to be a plan here. Next letter. Atoms. Another interesting idea. Can I move this to my other screen and still have it show up? Oh yes I can, that's much better. Okay, we have an O. <laughs> Next. I don't think we need to wait between rounds because I think you uh I think you're on to something here now. Whether it's the right thing or not, I don't know. I'm onto something. What 
I like about this game over City Guesser or Scriblio is that I can show people the plane while we're, uh, while we're playing. In fact, I might even be able to stick it above my head so it's taking it. That's good. Yes, look at that. Pro streamer things. City Guesser is the best game by far, we'll take no debate. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But it's nice to have something different for a change. Should play my favourite marbles. I've never done marbles on stream, actually. We could do that. We could do that. Boss, my day's gone from bad to worse. No, what's happened, Riley? What's happened? I'll try something red for actual descent back. <laughs> okay, drum roll indeed. Check word. Well done. <laughs> well done. It was a rose. It was a rose, which is the word I use as my first word almost every day when I do Wordle. I mix it up occasionally. But it's a really good first word. Top tip. So we're going to lose this VOR short. Yeah, well done indeed. Well done. Years later, yeah. Yeah, uh, stairs another good one that I sometimes use. Sometimes, if I'm feeling bold, I will use... Um, Adios. Uh, use that for a while. The plane was beeping, Scott. It's nothing. It's nothing to worry about, though. Ah, Will. Good luck with your quiz. Hope it goes okay, boss. Thanks for uh, coming by. Nice to see you as always. Well. See you soon. Crane on the weekend. <laughs> Seems like I bugged the plane over speed when he started. Yeah. To clarify to anyone watching who's trying to work out if this plane's good or not, it's not a bug. You just have to pay attention to your speed. If you don't uh, right, what's the outbound course? What outbound course do we want? Uh, 156, 156. No, that's the distance again. 251. And we'll wait to be in range of LBF. Let's check that. It's a uh, North Flat. Yeah, it's another 40 miler. Well, I got a flying lesson, but when reserving the aircraft, I found out that my top class Cessna 172 crashed. Oh my goodness. With the people in it, okay. I mean, as bad a day as that sounds for you, it sounds rather worse for whoever was in it. How did you still July? God. The DA twenty U flu was written off a few weeks after your flight. Yeah. Hey. This has certainly taken a turn for the dark, isn't it? Nobody was injured. Okay, good. Good. That's the main thing. Would you like to do one more Wordle while we've got it up? I learned how to do actual descent planning by a former pilot. And it fits better than I thought a rule based on 3 1 would. That's why we stick to sips, yeah. Let's do one more and then try marbles or wiki game. Okay, I do quite fancy marbles. Don't trust it to hide it, actually. Um, well, it really does hide it. 
Here you go. So Stewie, you just have to type a letter in the chat, just a single letter. And you're trying to work together. So try and type the same letter as someone else until you come up with an idea of the word. And whoever, whichever letter gets the most types, <laughs> gets the most votes in the chat will um, uh, be entered. And then you keep going letter by letter. At the end of each line, you'll find out if the word you've put is right. And um, Simon, Simon773, welcome boss. Welcome. How are you doing? Okay. So we have a Z with one vote. <laughs> uh, next letter. So again, you're just you're trying to come up with a letter between you. Um, oh, we're over speeding again. Wait, it hasn't started yet. Now it has. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're going for. Good. Good. This is, this is, in some ways, it's as likely as any other word. Okay, so we have an E. Next one. The countdown for a Randstein Fury Ace with yeah, but I mean, we have had rounds. The first round, nobody noticed it was going. So I guess, I guess there is a need for it. Next one. Actually, yeah, three seconds is a waste of time. Yeah, it's all right. Next, final letter. <clears throat> and it does play a sound, and I think it's to help Screamer organize the cats. Does it play a sound? I haven't heard anything. What's it got to do with cats? You've lost me there, boss. Okay, let's see how we did. So there is a B, there is an E, but they're not in the right place. Chat oh, I see, Jay's chat is about to work this hard to organise this chat. chat. <laughs> okay. But, but Jelly, it is a cute chat, it's awesome. So yeah, for those of you who have joined the stream recently, uh, we are flying a preview build of Just Flight's upcoming BAE 146 100 um, from Chicago O'Hare to Denver, Colorado. And we're also playing a bit of Wordle. So if you'd like to be involved with that, the idea is that you work together to guess a letter or to guess a word and then guess the letters in. Whoever, the most people who type, um, I'll go so, the more people who type a single letter, the more likely it is that that will be the one that's picked. So it's basically the letter with the most votes that goes in the next square. Captain Arash, hello, how are you? Are you ready for the next round or do you wish to do more talking amongst yourselves first? Tough on E, especially while descending. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, that's good. Let's do it. I'm 
hoping the silence in chat is everybody think, yeah, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, BBS is what we're spelling, Alex, which stands for Bulletin Board System, as I recall. Cavelty19, welcome! Thank you very much for the follow. Thinking is for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a B. Okay. Next letter. Oh, service, is it? Bulletin board server. Okay. <laughs> What's your opinion on this model and how do you compare it with the existing third party planes for MSFS? This is the best jet airliner I've flown in, M in MSFS. It's fantastic. It feels good. <clears throat> it sounds good. It looks good. It's a great plane. <coughs> there are one or two bugs, but nothing major. Okay, so we had. How's it only picked up? Oh, okay, so it's a draw between E and O. Yes, I would advise. I mean, I'd advise against putting E because we know that there isn't an E there from the fact that the E came up in orange. So they come up in orange. They are in the word, but they're in the wrong place. Try again. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. And if they come up in sort of faded out orange, then they're not in the word at all. You misheard the cover. <laughs> Bones, interesting, interesting. Right, we have an O. Next letter. And while you're doing that, I'm going to have a look at my flight plan. Make sure we're going sort of the right way. One one seven point four. Might as well make that active. Okay. Next letter. We have an N. Some differences of opinion about what should come next. Interesting. It's such a clever idea, this guy. Right, final letter. Doug. <laughs> Right, let's see how you did. Not badly, not badly. Have another thing. I mean, it's clearly not both. We, we can now rule that out. Your great-great-grandmother is... So runway's pretty hard to see with all the snow. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Have you, have you flown to Aspen, Paul? I thought you were flying to Heathrow, boss. Oh, you, you're in the voice chat, aren't you? You're in the voice chat. Okay. So you've got one letter correct, and you've got two. The O and the E are in the word, but not in their current position. Are you ready for the next go? 
And then watching Morrigan land a game. I landed a so Yeah, of course you would have done. Oh yeah, you said. You even said it was good. You gave us your feet for a minute. Sorry. Don't remember stuff. Alex says no. Stewie says let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference. And in 10 seconds we're going to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go. Vishkas, welcome to the chat. Nice to see you, boss. I can confirm that biome is a word. Birth is a French word, but it's spelled B O B U F, I think. Uh, I can, I'm going to give you that. It is an English word that we're doing. Ooh, look at that, we're within range of the next gear up. So let's just change our heading to an intercept one. And arm um, VR. Been watching this since the beginning, but busy, so I haven't said anything. Oh, right, okay. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you, of course. Right, next letter. Bloke, biome, biome, or food, eh? What a choice. What a choice. Gonna get some water. Yes, Moritz! <laughs> Got something far more important to do. It's a good 80s mix, isn't it? It might have been both of them. I don't know where Mildred is, to be honest. <laughs> okay, next letter then. And while you guess that, I'm going to do tune my next VOR. Cheers! A long way away, 267 nautical miles. I wonder if there's one in between. There is, there is. Oh, there's a couple actually. Yeah, let's use those. Simbrief just doesn't give you good VOR to VOR routes. Seeing as there's no ATC on there, we can adjust it as we go along, I think. So, next VOR now is going to be Sydney. Does it have a bit more range, perhaps? Yeah, it's got a range of 130 nautical miles. That is good. Have fun with Twirdle, guys. I'll keep watching in the background. All right, next letter. You're right. We know you're going for biome now, I guess. Okay. Um, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. What is your... 
be fair, no one uses VOR to VOR IRL anymore. No. Well, except in classic planes, I guess. I know, even they would have it. Awesome. Um, they have a range of 150 to 200 north. Well, some just. Most of the ones we've used today have had a range of 40. And that's accurate. It's not just a sim thing. Right, final letter team. Outbound course of 259. I mean, North Platte is an L VOR, it's a VOR DME L. Don't know what an L VOR is, don't know. So we have a mixture of L VORs and H VORs. Does anyone know the difference? It's a conventional VOR, right. Anyway, let's check, is it biome? Ooh, it's not, but you've got three letters in the right place. Well done. I'll give you another 10 seconds thinking time. Yeah, I have tried to do some reading on it. I haven't learned much yet. I should have gone with Blake, guys. Okay. The most normal Europe one is DVOR, which is a doctor with a range of 152. Okay. Blake, broke. Both options. Oh, yeah, can't be artists. They are in Zebra. Okay, let's go. <laughs> what happened with Oski boy? Did he go off the end? Is it getting dark? Have I set the time wrong? It's supposed to be a morning. <laughs> yeah, I've set the time wrong somehow. Well, no, I didn't. I definitely set the time right. To be fair to him, it didn't hit the perimeter fence. Okay, good. Next letter. Hang on a second. Let me get this right. Change the time because I've done it wrong. So we're supposed to depart at 10.30 local and arrive at 12.40 local. So let's make it just morning. Make it like 11.30-ish. That's better. Well, we does have a lot of snow on it. Yeah, I, when I went to take the screenshot, I couldn't believe how thick the snow was. Ridiculous. AA are paying for a new localizer around <laughs> Yeah, sorry about the immersion. Next letter. Might have to do a cat three. No. No. Will I? The meta was fine when I looked earlier. Snowy, like snow on the ground, but no clouds. Were there clouds, bosses, who've already arrived? Shouldn't be. If I get there and there's clouds, next letter. Um, I'm switching to clear skies. Oh, sorry, you! I thought you meant me! MSF further is fine, Cabo. Excellent. <laughs> yeah! We've just been hearing about your arrivals. <laughs> yeah, while I'm uh, while I'm remembering stuff, um, it would be awesome if some of you 
uh, wanted to come and join my Discord server. Uh, it's a cool place to hang out. There's lots of nice people there. We have some good chats, good tip sharing, laughs, that sort of thing. Uh, so come join Discord and also do subscribe to me over at YouTube as well. I do about half of my streams over there. Um, Homer Max, thank you very, very much for the raid. RT of three, welcome to the stream. Very nice to uh, see you here. How was your stream? I was just busy telling everyone that they should go and uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. Um, because tomorrow evening, 17.30 Zulu, we are flying the Concorde. We're flying the Concorde from Heathrow to Jeff. And that's on YouTube. The flight was not great. Oh no, what happened? What went wrong, boss? Failed to go around, thrust didn't want full. Who oh, no. knows? Which airport were you arriving at in what plane? The plane, Tote de Mac Zero, is absolutely fantastic. I re it's, it's the best jet airliner add on um, for MSFS, in my opinion. And it's still in beta, it's not even fully finished yet. But yeah, it looks beautiful, sounds beautiful, it flies beautifully. I highly recommend it when it's out, highly recommend it. Cologne MD-11, oh right. Yeah, I've heard that the M I mean, I don't have x plane so I don't have first-hand experience, but I've heard the MD-11's a little bit dodgy. Okay, boss. They feel circles everywhere. I know, Jenny did explain this at one point. I've forgotten the explanation. Um, to be fair though, um, Homer, I'm flying a plane that I don't know how to fly all that well into Aspen, which has like a 63 glide path. It's not going to be visual. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm not feeling confident. Oh, sorry, next letter. Yes, my apologies. We are also playing uh, Twerdle. So this is the last letter. Let's see people go for and if they get it right Are you sure it's an E? Sure. Okay, everyone's voted for E. Are you ready? Hold on. Yes, it was bloke. Well done, team. Well done. Made it down with minus 140. Got visual at 250 HL. Nice. Yeah, well done, Alex. Well done. It was you who came up with the idea. I came up with the idea. It was you who came up with the idea. Yes. Well done, everyone. See, so Voita, you made everyone nervous. Right, so that was good. I would do that again. I would do that again. Uh, where's my gun? I don't know. Nice. So we're 269 nautical miles out, which to me is kind of time to think about descent planning and that sort of thing. So let me go through the approach with you again. There are no stars in two aspects, so we're just going to be flying to the initial approach fix for the visual. And then we're going to, yeah, just fly visually. So what we really need to know is how high we want to be at red tape. Now, Tim said that he recommends being fully configured at that point. Um, and it says recommended 12,500. Um, I'm just gonna have a look at the airport elevation as well. Because these are things that it's good to know. So the touchdown zone is 7,680 feet from the field, uh, which means 12,000. So we've got to lose about 6,000 feet from here 
uh, to the runway. We want to be fully configured. So, 12,500. We're currently at two, two, level 280. 12,000. 22,000. So we need to leave, leave, need to lose 16,000 feet. Um, so, 16 times 3 is... 48. So we want to start out to send 48 nautical miles out from red tape. Um, but because we want to be absolutely sure that we're fully configured, I think we're going to add 10 onto that, so that'll be quicker. We're going to start our descent 60 miles. 60 miles out of red tape. Does that work for everyone? Does that sound like a good idea to me? Alright, I'll pop in a quick shout, be back in like 50 minutes. Yeah, loads of time, boss. Plenty of time. Uh, go around so plenty of time. I will not be going around, boss. I will not be going around. Uh, what did I see? I'm sure I saw some. I mean, Tim said, yeah. So there is no missed approach procedure for the Roaring Port visual. Now, that's not quite the same as saying you can't go around. But it does kind of suggest you're really on your last legs if you go around, isn't it? All right, Maurice. Was that with the screams of passages in the <laughs> No worries, boss. We're not all sitting in Aspen, and we haven't set our panel of judges next to the front. <laughs> well, you know, boss, comes with the territory, doesn't it? I've already made my excuses. A tricky approach, plane that I don't really, that I'm not that familiar with yet. Um, so, K Sara Sara. K Sara Sara. Maybe hit the wrong button on approach then. So it's taken me about half the flight, but I seem to have got my speed pretty steady. What about what Mac Decimal 6? 5, ideally we want it to be Mac Decimal 6, eh? There we are about 6. Yes, there's 6, 5. That's pretty much bob on. Exactly what we want. You went off the runway in Zurich last week. How? What happened, boss? Not have expected that of you. I should have come in a bit, a bit lower than I did to do the snow because it's my first snow land. Oh god, Oski boy. No excuses needed, boss. I know. I've done this approach myself. Well, not this one. It's a blooming hard airport to land at. Even without the snow. Boss, if you think you're too low, go a bit lower. I'll take that under consideration, Void. The approach was crazy. It was so crazy the fact that I forgot to call my approach because I needed to pick this. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I, I won't lie to you. I am slightly anxious about this. Point. But what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? We all die. I die, but it's all virtual. And you'll love it. So, you know. Kai will love it as well. This is the person who's going to smash short of the runway. <laughs> Boy Tech, you were had, boss. You were had. If you're scraping the treetops, you're on point. <laughs> I thought I was too low until I saw the run last. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> Haircut? I haven't had a haircut. Oh, trees. Trees. Hello. Hello, it's Chelsea Simulations. Welcome. Ah, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Nice to have you here. 
So we're flying the uh, the BAE-146, a preview build uh, of this, and it's going very well. But we're about to do a tricky visual approach into Aspen with a very steep descent. So it may not continue to go well. We shall see. Very, very flat, isn't it? Every time I fly west from Chicago, I, I, I think how, you know, flat and same is. But when we get to the mountains in the Colorado Rockies, then we're going to see some sights. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> right, so we have about 250 odd miles, if I recall correctly, although I'm not looking at my flight plan. Um, yeah, there was a request for marbles. Should we have some marbles? I've never done it before. I know Ben used to do it quite a lot, it seemed fun. Right, how does it work? Oh, I have to download it. Fine. Gonna work? Yes, I think so. You're only doing two, 223 knots. Good grief, boss. Good grief. Alright, I'm downloading marbles. I thought it was browser based, but no, apparently not. Oh, uh, no, it's not fine. Just need to go and change my ESIC battery. It won't be long. It's all sorted. Let's see if this uh, marbles is installed yet. Uh, no, it's still downloading. Is it a good idea to download an app while you're streaming? Probably not. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Yay, Bay Pro! Welcome, welcome. How are you? Yes, yeah, so even I. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. If, you, if you're if you too high, then, yeah, the game's already the game's already over. Originally from the US, I live in Bahrain for the past year or so, in Saudi on business with Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Did you already speak Arabic, or did you have to learn it out there? Yes, Alex, you did hear marbles. You did, but I have not downloaded it. And have you spoken? You spelt marbles with some kind of Danish O. <laughs> P 
Pog screenshot from Aspen. Okay, let's have a little look, see? Uh, cockpit looks good, haven't flown the 1416 P3D yet, still in the hangar. Oh, you're a P3D flyer, eh? Okay, nice. Um, do you have MSFS as well? I don't know. I, I, I'm so impressed by it. I never had it. I never bothered with it in P3D. I just thought, nah, that plane's not for me. Um, but actually, now I've got it in MSFS, I wish I had. Because I think I'd rather enjoy it. Um, Fancy Bread, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the uh, channel. You didn't need to learn Arabic. Google Translate does a basic job. I think there are a few cents. Oh, okay. Okay. I guess it's quite an international community. Sad, is it? Uh, right. What am I trying to do? Share the screen so we can look at um, Voitech's screenshot, which is absolutely incredible. It really is. Hang on. There it is. Look. Look at that. This is my welcoming committee. <laughs> A lovely shot, really lovely shot. Very real. You can live in, you can live without Arabic in the Gulf. English is a second language for everybody there, basically. Oh, okay. I did, but MSFS gave you loose screen of death which required a fresh install of Windows to clean. Oh. Yeah, I can see why that would put you off uh, rushing back to it. I bet they'll give you extra points for learning that. Yes. <laughs> Patriotic flag waving intensified. Ooh, marbles is finished in school. Right, how does it work? Play game. Oh, I don't want it full screen because I can't see my sim. Okay, there's a warning when you start it up that uh, there, there may it may induce epileptic seizures. Uh, is anyone in the chat epileptic? Or photosensitive in some other way? Find out now, Doctor. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to play a game that's going to make some people need to look away. You know, that wouldn't be okay. That wouldn't be okay. All right, how the hell do you do it? It's very complicated. Let me share the screen with you. Maybe you can talk me through it. So this is Marvels. I've signed in. Um, what do we do? Race, I guess. Race? Standard. Even in the gulf between neighbouring countries like Qatar and Saudi, it discuss this. The amount of English spoken. Oh, the, diff oh, the different dialects of Arabic. Okay. That's interesting. I know that. Job will give me about an extra hundred dollars to be It's not a lot. <laughs> Just landed into LL and you came back to Marvel's good timing, Simon. I don't know how to make it. I tell you what, Doug. I tell you what. I haven't had to ban anyone for a long time. A long time. But I'm this close. Right, I know what. Anyway, right. right. We're going to do a random map. All right, viewer or so, viewer race, right? Race. Right here we go. Uh, what do you have to do? You have to put exclamation mark play. Okay. Right. <laughs> do I do? I, okay, I can do that.
Oh. <laughs> Might have to turn that off on, uh, <laughs> on stream elements, I guess. All right. So this, what's, what does this mean? Eight people. Right, okay. Alt, I think, to show the name tags. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Nice. How does one play this? It's been a while. You just type exclamation mark play. And then I press start when everyone's in. And then someone wins. And it's tremendous fun all around. Yeah, you do nothing. <laughs> but I don't... I can't see my flight sim. I want to see if the plane's still open. Yeah. I, maybe this is why Ben always used to play this after landing. <laughs> okay, ready? I'm going to press start. I'm going to press start. No, you can't do anything at all, Stuart. But it is still really exciting when you win, even though you've done nothing. Wait, how do I... Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I do... Bosses, how do I move around, please? I don't know how to move it move the view. Ah, WAS and D, okay. Yeah, boomer controls. Right, okay, there we are. So, <laughs> Sabres is in front. <laughs> Dorman, Alex, racing ahead. Where am I? I can't even see me. Dorman slowed down quite a lot. How many players? 11. Name tag. All right, but I pressed alt tab. That's why they disappeared. They're back now. But where am I? I can't see myself. Yeah, I did. I typed exclamation mark play. This is a slow old map, isn't it? What's exclamation mark boost? Does that actually do anything? you need to click join in the t oh okay all right next time community maps next time they're better mostly all right boss thank you I'm, all right. I'm very much a marbles beginner i think it's going all right considering fishcast is looking like he's on track to win even the game where he has absolutely no control at all All right, community maps it is. This is quite cool. Oh, what happened to Vishkas? Oh, he's got... Oh, no, he's, he's gone further. Oh, blimey. Oh, blimey, that's a bit worrying. Oh, this is where it could all change. Oh, Dorman sneaking around the edge. Yeah. Oh, it's neck and neck. It's neck and neck. Oh, that was close. Bilbit stream already confirmed better. I had much less luck in Bilbit stream. <laughs> Is this the end? Yeah, it must be. Finish. Vishkas, unsurprisingly, has won. Followed by Scouser Mike and Dorman hot on his heels. Iowa Scotsman appears to be a little bit stuck in the fan. Doug flies next. Stewie 86, Alex, Iowa Scotsman. Simon. Where are you? Yeah, you are losing with Simon. <laughs> Sabres straight to the fans, straight to the fans. 
Yeah, top three is not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Woo! Middle of the pack. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, fans causing some problems for Marker and and Paul. All safely through. It's all right, Marker. We'll wait. <laughs> well done, Vishkas. That was good. That was a good game. That was a good game. I do want to check on my plane, though. Because, yeah, you see, I've got a bit slow now. I'm just going to add a bit more thrust. I will never get that. Well done on not losing. Which one is... F I didn't join. I, I, I typed exclamation mark play. But apparently I had to do... Because I'm posting it, I, I had to click something else. At the top of the, top of the thing. I'll know for next time. It's quite nice to be impartial on the first go. Yeah. <laughs> right, how, long, how far are we? 156 nautical miles. Half hour. Oh, Christ, except I we see. I cannot multitask. We should be going to GLL now on 114.2. It's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, we're still going the right way. But, uh, yeah, we should choose not to go out, ideally. In an ideal world. 114.2. And we want an inbound course of well, whatever we want, really. There we go. BL. And we want an outbound course of 237, and that will be 92 miles from RLG. Hang on a second, let me just sort out my flight plan. Right, there we are. Okay, we're back in it. We're back in it. And I can... No! Did exclamation mark boots work? Did it? Right, I'll switch to Ben since I get better luck. You switch to Ben anyway, Marker. Don't make it. Don't pretend it's because you're more lucky on uh, marbles. <laughs> There are no commands that do anything, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, the final order was Vishkas, Scoutermike, Dorman, Dougfly, Stewie, Alex, Iowa Scotsman, Simon, Sabres or Sabres, tell me how to pronounce it. Uh, Paul and then Mark. Oh no, I've been called out, whatever shall I do? <laughs> Dunno, maybe get on the blower to Ben and ask him to start streaming, Marco. <laughs> 30,000 Philbios, awesome! Save that to next time, yes. One more game, one more game on a community map. Alright, when we pass this next VOR. Sabres, thank you. Oh yeah, NHL Hockey Talk, right. I'll remember that, probably. Right, so we're 10 nautical miles, and our next leg is 92 nautical miles. The leg after that is 51. It's alright, can, we can play and I can keep an eye on the uh, thing at the top, can't I, for distance from it. Yeah. Right, what I'll do is I'll just change our course now, because we only want to be going 237, so 237 inbound and outbound. I'll pre-tune the next VOR, 
uh, which is 113.8. On one three point. There we go. Boosty only works on the ones that allow boost. Roger. Oh, Stewie, bad timing, boss. No worries, no worries. Yeah, thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you. See you on the next one, I hope. Concord tomorrow evening. Seventeen thirty Zulu YouTube. Right, come on then. Come on then. We can do one more. Might have to tap out of it if um, bad things start happening to the play. Okay, so race menu? No. Race menu? Yes. Okay. Community maps. Should I just pick a random one? Let's try this one. Uh, race. Oh, sorry. You just, you just did. You just scam. Scam. Yes, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> right. Type exclamation mark play and I click join. Okay, good. Good. It's all going to be fine. Getting the hang of this. And you know why? Because I'm not a boomer. Any more for any more. Got 11 people. Anyone else want to play? You're a boomer, Sabres, are you? Well, I have nothing against boomers, but you should speak to Doug. <laughs> Doug said, Boomer plays uh, marbles. Okay. I think that'll do us. 12 people. Ready. Sounds first. I'm an I'm an ex Zuma. I'm in between I'm in between millennial and Gen X. No, not ex Zuma. Exennial. Exennial. That's the other one. So I. Oh Christ. Ah. Oh. Right. Oh my goodness me. This is fast. Fast and furious. Right. So we got two troughs. Two troughs. Ribbon and uh, melon seem to be in the lead. This is quite cool, isn't it? Ah! Oh my goodness me. What's all this stuff falling out? Ooh! Oh, Morris, stay or go, but make your mind up, please. What's this? Some kind of force field? Don't know what this is supposed to be. He probably wants his tea, but it's a bit early. Morris, this is. I don't know what this is. Is it liquid? Yeah, it's like waves, isn't it? Oh, wait, has everyone got down? What? Wait a... <laughs> I, don't... I don't know how it works. I don't know where everyone is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally missed everyone. <laughs> it just looked like everyone was waiting in that force field bit. Okay, we've got... What's this? Me. Me and Doug, neck and neck. Ooh, this is exciting now, isn't it? This is exciting now. Ooh, yes. <laughs> That's how it's done. I understand this is the end of my mod tenure, but what have you... What? <laughs> Some of you got knocked out. Oh, I'm sorry. It had a 99% rate of not being knocked out. 
Uh, well done me, eh? Right, what's this clip? Have some conversations for us. <laughs> Ribbon did well out of that one for channel points. Are people bidding channel points? See, so yeah, this is all passed me by. Oh, now someone's good. No, no. Will a, oh, will a mod win the next round of marbles? Blimey! Yeah! 14,000 between you! Right, that's it, that's enough for that. That's enough for that. See final results, here we go. Oh, look at that, Doug. A fraction of a second between us. A fraction of a second. Good game, good game. If I don't win the race, I at least win some channel. <laughs> Gambling is at the heart of Marvels. Okie dokie, right. No, 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 I want to quit. No! No, no, no. No, we're not having another game because I've got to get ready for the descent, haven't I? There we are, it's gone. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Hang on. Let me get my head back in the game. Right, so I don't want to split them. <laughs> Good. Rigged, no congrats, thank you. When when was this Sabres what? He's not a boomer. Oh yeah, airplanes, exactly. You're telling me what I said is worse than Shin Kick. What did Shin Kicker say? So were you born in the generation directly after World War II like in the UPR? You're not here. No, I think you're probably not. I think. You can play one. <laughs> Boomer equals Babe with Boomer, generation immediately following World War II. Yeah. Like 50s, maybe. 50s to mid 60s, maybe? Okay. Late 40s, maybe, I don't know. It's just. It's, it's, it's. Misinterpreted, he thought he'd see what's talking <laughs> Right, so we have. Um, we have 40.6 nautical miles from our last VOR, which was. Uh, GLL, Gil. We're now heading to Kremlin VOR, which sounds a little bit German to be honest with you. And then it's Red Table for the Red River Visual. Red River? Roaring Fork Visual. Red Table, Roaring Fork Visual. And we're going to try and avoid overflowing the noise sensitive areas. So let me just do some quick maths. We are 47 nautical miles. Let's switch the VORs. Forty-six nautical miles. The next leg is going to be 40 nautical miles. So that makes us 86 nautical miles from our approach point. So in about 20. 26 nautical miles will start our descent, so that will be when we are, call it 25, 45, 35, 25, 20 nautical miles from this VOR will start our descent. See? Maths. 
not necessarily accurate with this but that's And we're going to talk a little bit about how we make this plane descent because I need to refresh my memory and you might be interested. Uh, so... Not this bit, not this bit, this bit. Right. We want to descend at 250 knots, so we'll start reducing our speed soon. Ah, probably not actually, we're doing 250 indicated right now. Um, and we're going to preset our altitude, and the recommended altitude for red table is 112, sorry, 12,500 feet. Lower this down. And we will arm it. And that shouldn't do anything, it shouldn't uh, cause us to descend or anything. And we'll descend, I guess we'll descend in IAS mode, to be honest with you. I quite like descending in IAS mode rather than IAS. I'm sure it's an acceptable option. It's not talked about in the manual, but, you know, why wouldn't it be? Um, right, what else do we need to know? We need to engage descent mode on the TMS. And then we'll do the descent checklist. Oh, it's ever so bumpy, isn't it? Good job I never turned off the seatbelt sign, innit? <laughs> you might be a boomer at Marbles, boss, but when flying you've got the brain of a freshly trained 20-year-old Air Force at this <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to choose to interpret that as not sarcastic. <laughs> Apparently the Gen X also apparently I'm Gen X also called the MTV generation, sometimes characterized as slackers. I couldn't possibly comment for it. Thankfully no passengers in the back, so our emergency cleaning crew is just on standby, yeah. Katie Zora, hello, welcome! How are you? It wasn't was good. Do you descend calculations in a few seconds? Oh thank you, thank you. Glad that was a Um, yeah, I'm very well. Very well, thank you. How are you? So we are just approaching our top of descent into Aspen. Uh, for those of you who have just joined. Uh, ooh, we're not in BL mode. That's all. Going the right way. Uh, yes, and it's going to be an interesting visual approach uh, to Runway 15, the Roaring Fall visual. I'm just going to bring that back up on the stream to show you all what we are in for. I mean, you can see it, I can't. There we go, now I can see it too. Um, so, yeah, Red Table is our final waypoint. We're going to aim to be 12,500 feet by then. And, yeah, just follow this curve. We'll see what we see. Put it that way. We'll see what we see. Hopefully, the airport. Um, and as you can see, we've got some noise sensitive areas around here that we want to avoid. Um, so we're going to try and keep it close in the sort of left-hand side of the valley initially, I think. That's how best to describe it. Ah, oh, your back wheel! How did it go? Not not well. We've got an... <laughs> wow. Eek, everything happened at once. Got to get the spuds on. Hopefully won't miss too much. I hope not, boss. Hope not. So what happens if I engage IAS mode now and bring my throttles back? Hopefully we descend. I think this is a good way of doing it. And we want to descend at about 2,000 feet per minute at about 250 knots. So if need be, we can uh, extend the air brakes. What's going on my sim crash loading? Which sim?
I mean, to be honest, it doesn't matter which. So these things just happen sometimes. Hopefully, it'll be uh, okay next time around. Hmm. No, luckily it's first year, so they don't count towards main grade. But I lack the knowledge, really. Forty-eight out of hundred. It's dreadful. It's dreadful. But yeah, I get why you're a bit disappointed. But as you say, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Right, so the next VOR is, as I said, Red Table Eagle, 113.0. And of course the manual talks about tuning, pre-tuning the ILS, we should be so lucky. So increase that descent rate a little. Could have been worse, exactly, yeah. Yeah. 48% of the knowledge plus is better than none of them. Right, I think that it pains me to say it, it's probably time to fade out the 80s tunes. That's the really the arrival. Professional DJ and going. Okay. ILS, what ILS exactly? Oh, Gibi, no bangers. But I promise, I, ha I promise that tomorrow evening we'll have bangers on the concourse stream. Promise. So we are... 45 and a half miles from the start of our approach and we want to be fully configured by then so let's have a look for our v-ref so once again the flip chart has uh, gone down we're going to be going for a v-ref of 113 as i said earlier one of the few bugs that i found in this and developers aware of it is that if you do v-ref you will drop below glide path um, obviously we don't have a glide path as such in here because we're flying visually but i'm going to keep the speed up anyway so i'll, I'll I'll aim for I think 123, something like that, and we can we can bug it if we want to. May as well, I think. It's very hard to judge your descent rate when the plane's uh, bouncing all over the place, isn't it? So we have a stick of speed bug there. I do. <laughs> Remind me. I owe a BBS. What's BBS in this context, Gibby? My sumo only started crashing when I added in the Piper Arrow 2 from Just Fly. No, I doubt it's that as well. I doubt it's that. Sa we're not having Big Bad Santa. Oh, Big Bad Santa. We're not having Big Bad Santa, boss. It's out of season. I've made a ruling on that at the end of December. <laughs> um, right, we want to follow the outbound track to uh, 200 now. nip it into heading mode so we can intercept that and in fact we're very close so we can probably get away with uh, tuning in the 113 decimal low, the final VOR yes, let's do that let's fly the inbound course to that the L mode and Bob as they say is very much your uncle good you see you see it's so geeky judges assemble <laughs> <clears throat> yeah uh, I have some doubts <laughs> I have some doubts but anyway, whatever happens, just remember, it's going to be fun. I'm sort of talking to myself here. It's going to be fun, and if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, because Kai's not here. I'm amongst friends. <laughs> Thank you.
So hopefully we'll be down in time to really get our speed reduced, get our flaps out, get our gear down, and have a very gentle and calm arrival at the end of it all. <laughs> Thank you, Melon. Got the camera focused on the approach. Marvellous. Marvellous. I've just realised I haven't really checked the minimum safes. Uh, we're passing through the transition level, so we'll set local pressure. It's apparently 29.75. Yeah, I haven't checked the minimum safe altitudes in the area around it. So it's 13,100 in the northwestern sector, 15,700. Yeah, maybe we don't want. Let me see, it's tricky because they recommend 12,500. But at the same time, we don't want to get down there too soon. So what I might do is add a bit of power, slow our rate of descent. That seems like a good idea. 6,000? Where did you get that from, Marker? I'm looking at the chart and it says... Hang on. It says recommended 12,500 from Red Table. Depends which one you're coming in from. Oh, the minimums. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Interestingly, I haven't found a way of setting barometric minimums in this. You can only set radar minimums. But anyway, the ceiling. We don't need actual minimums for a visual approach. We know that the ceiling is above 6,000 feet. We know the visibility is greater than 10 miles. Therefore, we're good to go. I can't believe Jen is not even here to see this. I only put this in the vote for Jen. <laughs> Still, good practice for London City, I suppose. Oh, hello. We're upside down. It's beautiful. Right, I've got cold feet. I'm going to stop my descent at 13,100 for now. And then as we get closer, we'll descend a little more. And he's here in spirit, yeah. Fading fast. Yeah, it's late for you, boss, isn't it? 12,500 confirmed safe, boss. Even from this... Yeah, I guess you came from this direction. All right, Roger. Thank you, boss. 12,500 it is. But I wanted to go to Disney World. <laughs> good, good. Uh, what time is it for you? Afternoon, I'd guess, Ray. Good afternoon. How are you? There's a ridge which will look too close, but it's fine. Okay. Okay, good. <clears throat> I don't really... anxious There's, there is a possibility Charles. there is a possibility but let's think positive for now at least really 3.30am god keep your wits about you so it's not my fault you said 12,500 is safe boss so 12,500 it is and if we die it's nothing to do with me what sort of approach so far fine but we haven't really started we've just descended to 12.5 and we're going to slow down and get some flaps out and get fully configured before we start the uh, finger me jig. Uh, the uh, <coughs> roaring fork visual. A bit in shock, but otherwise we've got my fourth jab. All is fine. We've got word that a young lad that I had fired drank himself to death. Oh, really? That's awful. I'm sorry to hear that. 
What's providing the guidance? The red table VOR. Alright, let's get a bit of speed break, huh? Speed checked below 205. Select flat. Oh, so for those of you who haven't seen the speed break, this is what it looks like. How cool is that? That is how the plane slows down. <laughs> Next stage of flaps. And we'll get the. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm. Maybe a little bit premature. Still four miles to go. Aspen Traffic United 4585 is uh, four and a half miles from the Red Table VOR inbound for the River Visual Runway 15. Don't know if they would have heard that because of the mountains. There is a. Yeah, there is a lake, but that's not what we're doing. Gear down. down. No, it's not my first time into Aspen, but it's my first time into Aspen in this plane, uh, which I don't know how to fly very well. Right, let's get the landing lights on. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? We're not at 10,000, but you know. That's the ridge you mentioned. Okay, so after this ridge, it should be plain sailing, right? And I either have to, I'm either going to be higher than I think or lower than I think. And one of these is right, one of these is wrong. So we're overhead the uh, VOR. 2500. Autopilot disconnected. Autopilot off. And it should be somewhere down here. It's just a gentle sweeping turn, but I don't see how that can be because if I do it too gently, there's a ridge. You know what I mean? One thousand. No, don't say things like that. That worries me a lot. The cockpit looks so much like Concorde. It does. It's interesting that these planes are coming came out at roughly the same time. Now I've got to cross the next ridge as well, haven't I? Yeah, I think you're right. I was I was looking down here for it, but it must be over the next ridge. Yeah, in fact it is over the next ridge, I can see. It. Hair dryer melting the mountains. Now it is exciting, isn't it? Don't forget to descend boss, thank you, Marker. I shall. <laughs> I shall descend towards this ridge. And I shall bring, I shall start my slow sweeping turn. Sweet Jesus, get me back to Chicago. <laughs> Boss, I very much, I'm very much with you. <laughs> yeah, I did this approach in the CRJ last time and it went well, but it was more, more by luck than judgment. <laughs> Rohit, you forget whose channel you're on, have a little faith. going to tighten this turn up a little bit. It's a bit too ridgy round here, isn't it? It's a bit too ridgy. Trust is kidding, we trust you over new hires in a <laughs> For now. It's a funny sort of visual approach because... 2500. You're not really visual with the runway for most of it, are you? Still, Aspen is nice when you're down, yeah. I think I want to descend quite a bit more, actually. It's at 6,000 odd feet, isn't it? Isn't it? No, that's the touchdown elevation. I don't remember. 7,660. Uh, I still can't see the airport and it should be right ahead of me. Oh, is that it? This is a nightmare. Just follow the slope of the valley. Thank you. But where's the runway? This is a road. 
Ah, it's there. Yes, I see it. I see it. I see it. God almighty, they should clear that runway. They should really clear the runway. Thank you, boss. Yeah, this is this is all looking familiar. I can see some flashing lights. Sync rate. No, don't worry about the sync rate. Sync rate's good. I'm not pulling up. But every time I blink, I lose it again. Okay, there. Right, I'm just going to stare at it. And if I missed some chat, my apologies. But, you know, this is not so easy. Yes. I'd say so. I mean, we don't have the FMS yet, so it's a bit early to make judgments about how study level it is. But, uh, yes, I, th I would say it's, it's very in-depth, certainly. I mean, it's all just a sea of white, right? I don't see any pappies or anything. It's very hard to judge my height. I know. I'm going to zoom in once more. It's it's here. It's here. So this is the runway. You can just see the lead-in ones. Like, in real life, it would be a lot easier to see than this. I would imagine there are pappies as well, but, you know, what, what do I know? 500. Without any visual references other than these lights, it's pretty much impossible to judge your descent rate. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay, I see a bit of runway edge which isn't covered in snow, so that's good. But my god, this is ridiculous, no? 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Whee! Not great. <laughs> Not great, but we're down. Rain pressure scene. Yellow and green spoilers. 80 knots. 60 knots. There are pappies, but you can't see them because of the snow. Well, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <laughs> right, next time we fly here, <laughs> if it's snowy, <laughs> we're going to change the weather. Good impression of that one pilot who landed at London City. <laughs> the runway literally doesn't exist. I know. Oh, here's the welcoming party. <laughs> Thank you, Oski boy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, let's find somewhere to park. We'll get the landing lights off. Well, taxi lights on, landing lights off. And I'm just going to stop round this bend and have a little look at the checklist. <laughs> it is Doug, yeah, yeah, it's one of the default um default but handcrafted airports. So uh I've flown here in summer and it's this beautiful approach which isn't too hard because it is um you know, it's not just a sea of white. Um but yeah, with 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 no differentiation between the runway and the areas around it because of the weather, it's ridiculous right after landing what do we do after landing after landing stand by one please we want to start the AP we should probably have started the AP on the approach but whatevs yeah so normally for the approach in this you actually want to turn the engine air off and the APU air on which I believe is in case of a go around so that you get maximum engine power that's my understanding Um, so yeah, we should have done that on short final, but honestly, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Hmm. Uh, Aspen traffic, United, 4585, runway vacated. 
Um, going to turn this to uh, standby. We're going to turn off the TMS. <clears throat> <laughs> We're going to turn off the uh, continuous ignition switches on and two or A and B. Uh, who is that? Sane, Sane 008. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Welcome to the channel. We're going to turn the APU air on. We'll turn the engine air off. Boom! You're off to bed. Don't blame you, Melon. And uh, thank you. Uh, very much for sticking around, staying up so late. They don't make overheads like that anymore, no. They don't. Have you seen the clip of the plane Avro landing in Dublin having n a tail strike? No, nor do I know which London city arrival um, he was talking about. No, these have both passed me by. Uh, um... <laughs> I, right, I know it was an oof. The landing rate's not going to be good. But, but at the same time, I'm quite proud of myself there. Because I was just landing onto white. And I can't even see if there's a parking stand here, you know? I'm just going to stick it up here and hope for the best. Because it's all covered in snow. Park it next to this CRJ. Lowly CRJ. What's this from the EKYT approach? <laughs> right, good. Parking brakes are set. Um, right, I have way too much food on my plate. Nice. Better too much than too little. Oh, I thought I'd set the parking brakes. Now I have. Good thing you didn't go around that. Yes, it says there's no missed approach procedure, which basically to me means on your own. How was the FPM? Looked very smooth on mine screen. Uh, let me have a little look. Standby one. Did we have a prediction on this? <laughs> 58. 58 feet per minute. <laughs> Quite a new. This was the Dublin one, was it? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, dearie me. 58 feet per minute. Whatever next. Oh, this is the... Oh, right, yeah, let's watch this. Double tail strike. Wow. Hang on a sec. Just need to bring it up. Uh, let's Boss, that is better than butter. It is, I know. Sorry, Riley. Will return. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. If I'm doing any more flying, I better practice the Concorde. Ooh, wee. Yeah, that's not good, is it? That's not good. <laughs> and what was the other one? Who's, that was Riley's. And this is what Simon's. Is this the London City jobby? Oh my God, look at that crab. Jesus. Yeah, you wouldn't have wanted to be on that, would you? I mean, he got it down. I assume everyone was fine, but my God. Wasn't CityJet taking any pilots? That is like Velvety Meringue, it is. Yeah, quite an ouch. This is the class that you can always go around. Yeah. <laughs> Down. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. I'm flying out of city in uh, a couple of weeks. I'm hopeful it's less windy than it was on this day. That's good though. That's good. Thank you for sharing this. I feel way better now. Um, right. Should we shut this plane down? I think that's probably the next stage. Um... In that one. Okay. Got to love City. BA146 is the perfect air. But it was. You know, I'm really sad that there are no BA146s at Heathrow anymore. 
Your hog planes, they were the best things to see there. I literally do LCY hops every day. Do you? Do you? <laughs> Will. <laughs> they are. I'm so sorry, everyone, for ruining your immersion. <laughs> My apologies. Apparently fingers... <laughs> right. What was the context, Alex, please? <laughs> so far, no traffic on Vatspy for me. I hope that changes slightly. I hope so. I hope so, Twills. Um, hang on a sec. Right, let me look at my checklists for shutting the thing down. I want to do it right now. Now I've had such a beautiful landing. Um, right. Switch off the taxi lights as you turn onto the stand. Did not do that. Once you come to a stop on the stand, engage the parking brake. Done that. Confirm that the aircraft is depressurised. I forgot to do that. I forgot to turn it down. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we're at about 7,000. Actually, hang on. Yeah, so no, we were about right anyway. That was about what the cabin altitude was. Fine, so we actually can check on the first officer's side. Yeah, so our current altitude and our cabin altitude are very much the same. Good, genius. Uh, switch off all the hydraulic pumps. Oh, right. Oh, I see. <laughs> Oh, I cross my fingers, you don't die. Right, okay. Yeah, thank you, Tars. Appreciate that. That's very sensitive. <laughs> right, we can turn off all of the hydraulics. All of it. Just those two. Uh, we can turn off uh, the generators uh, on engines one and two. Electric. Gen one. Sorry, one and four. And now we can turn all of the... Let's leave this to fuel off. Uh, we can switch off all of the heaters and all of the ice detection stuff. Ice protection is off. One, two, three, four, five. And ice detection off. Switch off the beacon light. Probably switch off the strobe light as well, truth be told. See, it was, it was even worse, Alex. Not only did I leave my taxi light, sorry, Alex will. I, not only did I leave my taxi lights on, I had the strobes on all the way on to stand, blinding everyone in the vicinity. Not okay. <laughs> right. That Cityjet one was repainted in the new Shamrock livery before the lease ended. Oh, was it? Sure. I've, yes. Stick them in the Discord, boss. I'd be interested to see. Robert's <laughs> stream is now X-rated. Follow should triple in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. Right, so now we can get our iPad back up and we can open the passenger door. And the most... Ex Everyone's disconnected! There's so much for the welcoming party. <laughs> Can't even wait for me to open my doors. So to get the sta air stairs down, we need to uh, turn on the AC pump because that provides hydraulic power to get the stairs down. Look at that. Look at that. Second only to the awesome speed brake, air brake. I was so confused because I thought I might have been the word die. <laughs> I think that's why the ground crew didn't clear the runways. Well, because I didn't turn my uh, strobes off. What? Whilst I need to go give trails some traffic. Okay, boss. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, no worries. Thank you for uh, thank you for flying along, Mark, and being in the stream. It's always a pleasure. Um, and that's it, really. That's it. That is us all shut down. We could switch all the electrics off, but we're going. Well, we're not going back again. Someone else is taking this plane back again. Leave engine two on. Open the door. Throw unruly children into the cell. <laughs> oh dearie me. Oh well, that was intense. That was intense, but. A lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was good. Um, let's see who we can raid. If anyone. There was like no one streaming. Oh, should we raid Sheed? Or should we raid Pilot Adam? Or should we raid B Mint? All vote now. I like them all. Sheed? Okay. 
Mint, okay. Sheed. A330 fan EN. I don't follow him. Sheed, Sheed. Mint, Mint is cool too. Okay, general consensus seems to be uh, Sheed. So we shall raid him. Um, and next time we'll raid, we'll raid Mint or Adam or uh, I should I should probably follow A330 Fanion. Um, I do know him. I know the name. Probably from Ben's stream. Anyway, before we do any of that, there are quite a few thank yous that I would like to say because this stream has been absolutely um, incredible in terms of support. I've never, ever, I don't think, had a stream like it. And it's really, it's been very exciting, basically what it boils down to. So let me just have a quick look at what's been going on in the activity feed. So, oh, has someone, huh? Hang on, that's not showing me the right stuff. No, this is showing me YouTube stuff. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Sign in, log in, log in, log in. Twitch. Not the ground crew at Aspen. I forgot what I said, Charles. Remind me, remind me. Yes, so. Um, in reverse order. Oh, for the... Oh, not for the thank yous. No, none to the ground crew at Aspen. No, absolutely not. <clears throat> so, in reverse order of time, reverse chronological order, there's a word for that. Uh, a big thank you to Homer Max 123 who raided us with three viewers. Um, a, a very big thank you to Will, who gifted a tier one sub to Scruffy Tam. A very big thank you to Scruffy for the uh, raid of 66 viewers. Incredible. Thank you very much indeed, boss. Um, thank you to Come Fly With Me Simulations for subscribing at tier one. Um, Lucas. My God, what can we say about Lucas? 21. 21 gift subs to the channel in one stream and subscribing himself at tier two. Rathole80, thank you very much for the follow. Um, I know he's not here anymore, but honestly, what a legend. Um, I've, yeah. No words, are there really? Marker, 100 bit cheer. Thank you, boss. Simon, five gifted subs. Um, Oski Boy, gifting a tier one sub to Magic Turtle AU. Thank you very much for that. Jonesy Boy, with uh, 569 bits. Scott, with a gifted sub to Tree Drew Um And uh, Simon and, and Lucas, with their initial three uh, gifted subs to Matt, Dylan, and Gibi as well. Um, and Lucas, of course, with his own sub. And then we had the crazy, crazy, crazy raid from Matt with 88 viewers. So welcome uh, any of you from that raid who are still here. Thank you for sticking around and thank you to Matt uh, for the raid. And starting the ball rolling many hours ago was Gibi with a £15.20 tip, uh, which is just lovely. Um, so thank you very, very much indeed, all of you. Thanks also to everyone who flew along with me. Um, and thank you to everyone who's followed today. We've had lots of new followers, lots of people watching. Um, absolutely incredible. The next stream is going to be on YouTube. It's going to be tomorrow at 17.30 Zulu, and we're going to be flying the Concorde from London Heathrow to New York JFK as Speedbird 001, which is very, very, very uh, exciting. I hope uh, I hope to see you there. I, and uh, yeah, it'll be mega pog. Um, Club Philbert Gold and Emerald members, uh, after we've said hello to Sheed, I'll be in the voice chat briefly, so come and join me there. Uh, the rest of you, thanks again. Do please stick around for the raid. Uh, Sheed's awesome. Um, yeah, thanks again, and see you later on. Bye-bye.